Olmec Enigma with Luke Caverns. You are listening to Brothers of the Serpent Podcast. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, angels and demons and monsters and serpents. This is Brothers of the Serpent Podcast, and we are coming to you not live from the 10 by 10 by 10 Tangent Cube of Science, where we are nestled amongst the dusty bones of an ancient seabed high atop the Edwards Plateau. And as you can see, we have Luke Caverns in studio with us again. Welcome back, Luke. Third time. Yeah. Good to see you again, Glad sir. to have you back, buddy. You. Hell yeah. And, Good to uh, see you again, sir. Good to see you again, buddy. Thank you for coming. Kyle has been... Uh, we're, <sighs> we're working on upgrading the studio again, and uh, the upgrades <laughs> have not been fully instituted i gotta so. give a shout out to old scotty baldwin <laughs> yeah he recommended this fantastic board and um kyle doesn't know how to I've use it i've had it for a week and i still <laughs> don't know how to use it so uh no i'm i'm getting it worked out yeah it just luke showed up and i was like i'm not ready so we went back to the old setup yeah. sorry man fourth time's the charm <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, i don't think we've ever been like had the studio completely ready every time he showed up. We've been <laughs> okay. in here working on stuff. So, but anyway, yeah. So it's great to have you back. So Luke was uh, at the Eclipse event with us, and he gave this fantastic presentation on Olmecs. And I've always been fascinated with the Olmecs because they are, you know, one of the most ancient known people of the of the Americas, and you know, they really are. And Enigma, and that's the name of your presentation, the Olmec Enigma. So I, I am super stoked to to hear this again, yep. and I, you know, because like we're sitting there in the audience, and I'm wanting to like stand up and ask podcast questions. <laughs> yeah, t- well, and that's <laughs> that's kind of uh, yeah. I'm I'm actually looking forward to this because I I want to hear different perspectives yeah. because you know when I and I'm sure you guys know you just spent like six weeks in in Egypt that when you're at those events or you're at trips with other people your perspective is just so limited i mean there's there you can have these new revelations but when you have other people that are like well have you thought about this look at that you know they have a different background your your understanding just expands so immensely at things like that and so i'm looking forward to hearing some of y'all's input today when i go through this awesome so how long have you been working on this omic enigma um just a presentation or, yeah, I mean the the whole like your your whole idea about this oh, and, and studying this um, yeah culture. So, okay, so the Olmecs, I first heard about them um, when I read the chapter uh, Olmec Enigma and Fingerprints of the Gods. That's where I got the, okay. the title of the chapter from. Um, that's Graham Hancock's Fingerprints of the Gods. For, I'm sure everyone listening probably knows that. Yep. But, uh, and um, that was the first time I ever heard of the Olmecs, and I was 16. So. Um, it's been 10 years that I've kind of known about the Olmecs, but then, you know, it, I started studying ancient Egypt and I eventually came back around to the Americas and, um, I don't know. I probably been studying the Olmecs for maybe three years, kind of intensely now, um, and going to see Olmec sites for two years. So, and I've, I've seen, I've been to the Olmec heartland three times now and this okay. trip that i just did in march was my first time through the entire olmec heartland so they had three major cities beginning in san lorenzo then trace Zapotes, then la venta and we started in la venta and went sort of backwards all the way up to mexico city and we saw essentially all of the megaliths in mexico because you can kind of hit them along all along this eight day route and uh man i just wow the there's so much in the, i mean we would go into these little when we pulled up to the town of trace Zapotes, it's this little veracruz indigenous village is really what it is um where they still live in maya style huts except this except the only thing different between them and people who live 3,000 years ago is that they have flat screen TVs and PlayStations <laughs> in, in these huts. Uh, it's, it's crazy. And so, you know, this van of gringos pulls up and everybody, you know, they all run out with their carts of little things that they're selling. And it's a big deal that all these people have showed up. And it's like the whole town shows up outside the gates of this little museum that we show up to to see these Olmec artifacts. 
and the museum is not a museum. It's a, it's a metal building where all the, where all the monuments are housed to protect them from, you know, further rain damage, but they're all made out of basalt. So they look fine. (laughs) And man, you go through, you go through these little museums and I've got some photos here, but I'm working on a better presentation with, with all of these photos that I've taken. Wait, you don't have the better presentation? <laughs> Dude, I haven't Go. released it all yet. Get out yeah, of yeah. here. But I have, I, have some of, I have some of these things in here. Um, How one, dare you not come prepared? I know. I, <laughs> I know. Um, one, of the things that, uh, one of the things that I think I have in here is, a, um, is this bird statue. It's probably, it's a little bit, it's oh, probably a little bit bigger than the area around, uh, around this table. And... I mean, the, the way that the feathers are carved, it's so detailed and so perfect that I'm walking around it and I'm thinking like, this looks, I've never seen anything like this on the internet. I did not know that the Olmecs carved bird statues out of basalt. Never seen this uh, on a photo anywhere, but it looked like in an obscure Egyptian statue that would be sitting off to the side as you're walking up into a temple or something. You know, sometimes the statues align or there'll yeah. be sphinxes. Mm-hmm. It looked like something like that. And I was thinking, why have I never seen this anywhere hmm. at all? Uh, you c- couldn't find it on the internet. I couldn't search like Olmec bird statue monument. Nothing will come up. And so, I mean, these places are just so untouched. I mean, I say untouched. That's but awesome. They're not, uh, they haven't been exposed to <clears throat> popular culture. And, um, so anyways, yeah, I, I put together this presentation, um, during and after that trip and, um, just this presentation just highlights a lot of the really strange things that I saw while I was there. Do you remember, uh, the, some of the details of Graham Hancock talking about Leventa, the stuff that he saw there, the carvings of the people that looked like they had been, uh, subjugated or captured in war or whatever. And he was saying it, they look, it looked like three distinct cultures or different people types. Mm. Um, Man, it's been a long time since I've read that okay. chapter in, in fingerprints, but yeah. it, it would be good now that I've studied the Olmecs for so long to go back. But I, I know that he's sort of recanted some of his ideas because in 1995, there wasn't a way to definitively prove that the Olmecs weren't African. And, you know, he kind of, uh, he kind of hypothesizes that a little bit in the book, but in 1995, there wasn't a way to prove it. Now with DNA testing, we know that they were Mesoamerican. And yeah. Well, I, so the, I'm not sure, but it'd be interesting to go back and reread it now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you're right. There was probably a, he was discussing a possible Africa connection in that. But the other thing, the, the thing that I was most interested in during those sections was the Viracocha story mm-hmm. and how he was suggesting that some of these images at La Venta may show um, the Vita coaches themselves having been caught, captured, subjugated. Oh man, I've got to, I've got to dive back into that. Yeah, now I don't remember see, that. See either. what exactly he's talking about. Yeah, he. Well, I mean, yeah, I could be getting it wrong as well. This is this was my impression when I read the mm-hmm. book, and then I've listened to it multiple times as well. And it's it, when you're when you're reading it and you're looking at the images, you see like this classic. You know, the people are bound. Yeah, they're shown laying on the ground. Some of them have been castrated. Like they've obviously they're warriors mm-hmm. that were uh, defeated, mm-hmm. and they're prisoners, and they're either being put to death or they're being tortured, whatever. But the point is, is that he was connecting them to, um, to different like people types that he was connecting to the Vita Kocha stories as well. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to dive back into that. Cause yeah. the only thing I know that may connect the Olmecs to the Vita Kocha story is right here. What we're, or what I've got on my first, um, the opening slide is, um, the Quetzalcoatl, Kukul Khan, yeah. feathered serpent. And sometimes he's associated with Vita Kocha. Um, so, that's that's kind of the only thing I know now, but yeah, this is again, kind of a famous been, image, right? This one oh is. yeah, yeah. I mean, this is well, it's my favorite Olmec monument. Look at that helmet, bro. <laughs> oh, it's it's crazy. <laughs> that's some good headgear right there. <laughs> I, I have absolutely. You know, I don't even think that. Well, no, I mean, I know that that is his hat, but I just can't even imagine what that must have looked like in real life. I know it's it's wild looking. It's, like, and they, then the side thing is like, are you? It's like, is that part of the helmet, or is that a, supposed to be a beard? No, you know? no, it it, it would have been, it would have been. So they had they had jaguar 
helmets where you okay. know they'd have the top of the, the head of the jaguar here and they dislocate the jaw and have the jaw on their own jaw and they'd have a jaguar helmet on mm. bro um, we should make those <laughs> oh how cool would that be yeah and um freaking temple talk merch <laughs> oh it'd be so, it'd be so cool speaking of which i'm working on something like that um but well, everything else above the hat i don't know and we're gonna see a ton of those in this presentation Nobody knows what they were what they were made of, and that's another thing we'll touch on is that is the Olmec headdresses and the helmets. We have no idea what they were made of. We have no idea what they actually looked like. Very similar to all of the Egyptian crowns or the Egyptian headdresses. Yeah, Egyptian beards. We've never found one. We don't know what they were actually made of. Yeah. Just a bizarre mystery. It, there's a lot. There's a lot in this presentation that I'm excited to get y'all's uh, opinions on. Well, Fantastic. let's get into it. Yeah, so, let's go. Let's do it. Okay, so we'll just go through these really quickly. So um, I'm going to look up here while I read it. So I'm just going to read through this. The first discovery is an archaeologist. First head discovered by Jose Maria Selgar y Serrano. Um, and that's in the, it's around 1865, I believe. And then Franz Blom comes later on in the 1920s. He discovers a statue at the top of the Tushla Mountains. And then another archaeologist comes right after him. Matthew, Matthew Sterling discovers other heads and numerous monuments at San Lorenzo and La Venta. So they're, they're starting to discover more and more and more heads. And, and Matthew Sterling, he was an archaeologist and explorers. Basically, you have these swaths of people who go looking for these monuments and none of them find anything and you have one guy who finds everything you just have got i mean he literally stubbed his toe on two different olmec heads <laughs> as he's walking through the jungle he stubbed his toe on them uh, yeah and, and and that was when he was just going on a walk and he wasn't actually on a survey he was on a walk on a farm that he was staying at and he was walking around talking to somebody boom hit his toe on the top of an olmec head um and then marion thompson um who was actually married to Matthew Sterling, uh, determines Olmecs predate the Maya through, uh, through Stile at Tres Sapotes. So that's a, we'll, we'll probably get into that. So in the first segment, we're just going to do a crash course on what has been found and some of your major iconic things. And so these, these column tombs, I don't think m most people know about them. I didn't until you gave this presentation. But each column... <laughs> Each column is three to seven tons, which in the largest, on average, are three to seven tons. The largest is about 20 tons, 20 plus tons, uh, usually hexagonal, and they're naturally uniform. So these are volcanic pieces. Or yeah, like these are columnar, columnar basalt. basalt. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they're constructing out of columnar basalt like the people at Nan Madol. Yes. Like the mm -hmm. people at uh, uh, Gunung Padang. Gunung Padang. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Uh, quarried from the Ciro, uh, Cerro Sintepec region in the Tushla Mountains over 80 kilometers away. And no bodies, but no bodies have ever been found in these tombs because when a body is buried, the acidic soil just, just eats it, eats everything, including the bone. How do they know their tombs then? Well, yeah, that's kind of the okay. whole thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I say that, I say that there's a slab on the inside that is the size of a human body, you uh -huh. know? So they think... They think that these are probably tombs, and around it you have, you know, you. Uh, oh well, and we also have are their grave goods. Has there, anyone? There's also a sarcophagus that was found in one of these, um, and so you a know, box. Yeah, a box. Yeah, <laughs> and so so, but they've got things around it, and so they think that these are. They think that, you know, they just so hold on. If that's a as, tomb, that is a beautiful tomb. But has anyone yeah. ever re referred to these as dolmens? Have you heard that being? Because I, I mean, like that I, I feel like reminds I that me of a dolmen. They look like dolmens. There. Yeah. But I'm not familiar with dolmen. A dolmen is a it, very similar it, type of construction, yeah. not necessarily out of columnar basalt, but they're they're all over Europe, Eastern Europe. They're in. They're I've in seen. Korea. Okay, and it's usually just about. like some slabs of stone. You got your side slabs, your back yep. slabs, your front <laughs> slabs, and <laughs> then you have slab. your roof slabs, <laughs> and then like usually there's a porthole mm -hmm. in you know the front slab. Sometimes it's a okay. portal door. It's like I, literally I, a hole. I have in seen. The, I have seen these. When you say they're in Europe, yes, yeah. and in like northwestern Europe, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about now. Um, so yeah, I mean, they just assume that these are, well, and then I should say there, we will see a stone monument here that depicts a, that it, it's got the depiction of a coffin that they found and in the stone monument is a body. So they, they depict it as what we think are, are, but I, I have another question. So you said okay. in one of these, they found a, a box. Is it a stone box? It was sandstone, yeah. And okay, they, so in a sandstone box, it would not be destroyed by acidic soil. So where was the body in that one? 
I don't know. I, I'm I'm not sure. I'm okay. not sure. Oh, actually, in that one, I, I've got it in here. Uh, it was filled with red cinnabar and treasures, I believe. Uh, no body though. So no, no. no I, believe, I believe no body. And and so the sandstone, um, the sandstone had weathered so badly in the ground that the force that it took to pull it up crumbled Crumble, all the crumbled. sandstone. <laughs> and, but it's like it was like one of the most amazing. Olmec artifacts and there's an illustration of it but that's all that we have today that's hilarious it's like it's like trust me guys i hit it really well yeah yeah <laughs> no one will be able to find it <laughs> yeah so uh so this one is estimated uh 15 to 20 tons and so yeah it just colossal you can see uh, i think that's dr barnhart's wife standing at the end she actually has three legs <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how that how is that happening <laughs> and uh I have no idea how that's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, two people, one of them scratching one of yeah, their feet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably so. Um, but these 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 basalt columns are just absolutely colossal. Yeah. And actually, they, I mean, completely in in weight and the mass of all of these columns that are brought there at Laventa. There are, it's hard, it was hard to get photos of them because you can't go off the paths, but off into the jungle, it's just a wall of these columns. I mean, I'm talking hundreds, probably thousands of them, just a wall, and they're buried in the ground. And they think that it, they could have been like fortresses around yeah, the city. Dude. So, I mean, imagine the weight of that versus a head. It's the heads all, to, the heads all together are nothing compared to the columns yeah. stacked together. It's wow. just, you're talking about moving so much mass across 80 kilometers. So then you have um, jade artifacts and iron ore mirrors also found in these column tombs. Uh, reportedly, they are the most finely polished artifacts in all of Mesoamerica, oldest mirrors known in the Americas, and the jade figurines depicting Olmec people with elongated skulls. See, these look Asian to me. Well, I mean, yeah, they, they are Asian, you know, I mean... That's kind of the thing is we don't really, it's probably, it's likely that people came from Asia in multiple waves, yeah. you know, and we don't really know exactly how many. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, these guys look I mean, that jade really mask, come Asian. on. You would not be surprised to find that in Japan or China or. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. It, yeah. And another thing is what's really strange is that there's something weird going on in Veracruz. When I first got, bef so. I had been to the I had been to the Olmec heartland in Tabasco, Mexico, twice before. This was the first time I was in Veracruz. Indigenous people in Veracruz actually look like this, and they look completely different than anyone else in Mexico. It's very strange. We mm. showed up at I think it was the town of Jalapa, and we knock on the door of this Olmec museum, and the guy who opened it, I shit you not, <laughs> was an Olmec. <laughs> he was like he, but he was like six foot five, and he was this he was this fat dude with these thin eyes, a big nose, big lips, big you know round face, and yeah. I was like, oh, oh he shit, looks like an you're Olmec an Olmec head, head. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, and um, it that's cool. They look totally different, but man, do they their monuments look Asian, and the people <laughs> look Asian too. So you know, I just wouldn't be surprised if. If there's a lot more migration to the Americas from Asia than we possibly know, you yeah. Know? I mean, we know that people were arriving from in Easter Island. We know people were coming across the Strait, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were people sailing straight across the Pacific or somehow ending up in Mexico. Um, I guess the interesting thing is that is that Veracruz is on the eastern side, on the Atlantic side. So it's tough. It's just a mystery. I, I I can't really explain why they look like this. In they the, also look like uh, I don't know Polynesians, like the yes, they're very, similar to the Hawaiian very, people. Very much so. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. You, you can see this that same resemblance. So it's like somewhere there they have common. Yeah, yeah and it's either that ancestors. or it's just like the genes are so strong. Yeah, you know, I mean, because yeah. I guess the idea is that people had been in the Yucatan we know for twenty thousand years, and so you know maybe. Uh, those genes are just so strong. They still have those Asian style traits. But the yeah. thing is, you see Native Americans in modern day United States, and they look, they their their genetics look like they have drifted so far off from their Asian heritage. They look like yeah. their own unique yes. genetic people. But you have the Olmecs that look Asian. It's yeah. very weird. Mm. And then the Maya don't look anything like this. 
The Maya have <laughs> long Mesoamerican native faces with, you know, big noses and long faces. They don't have these chubby oh, like round long, faces. Yeah, they've got long, narrow, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's bizarre. I can't, I cannot explain. Multiple migration, waves of migration. Yeah, right? yeah, I, I cannot. Yeah, that's what I think it is. But how you explain how they're, how they're on the Atlantic side, I don't know. Because I, you don't see, I saw tons of artifacts. You don't think they could have crossed the? Like gone all the way around? Oh, I mean like. Just cross the cross land. the land. I mean, you, you should see oh, their traces. Well, though, that's like, kind of the thing is I was going to say, you know, in the, in the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City, just out of pure curiosity, I went to the Western Mexico section, which it, Western Mexico is is very overlooked because, I mean, they didn't have these monumental giant pyramids and cities. They had these like underground shaft tomb uh, little uh, labyrinths. They had some cool stuff, but you don't see... Um, you don't see anything that looks that even resembles Olmecs. I mean, they have they have this amazing pottery that they turn into 3D figures and homes and stuff. It's really insane art, but they look very Native American. They have, you know, angular, mm. sharp cheekbones, very high cheekbones. They look like Native Americans. Okay. So the Olmecs just it's like they're Yeah, they're very different. Yeah, it's it's very very hmm. strange. Um so you the next one these are very interesting so you know most of the time we look at these uh these olmec heads but at the same time they have these altars and uh and thrones which i think are one and the same that weigh as much as the head so potentially depicting a shaman or an oracle emerging from a cave portal they're carved after the transportation because they found so you can see on altar 44 the one that's uh, 44 tons when it's finished you can see that that lip how it extends over right next to where this altar was they found the the pieces of basalt that are chopped off and so we know that this thing was more than 50 tons when it was being transported wow. and they waited to carve it you know of course that makes sense um uh, sometimes depicting a child wear jaguar being carried by a shaman <coughs> so on the bottom well real right. quick another thing that it tells you is that <clears throat> no one <laughs> since the time this was carved, had the ability to steal it or move it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. It makes sense that you would move the object well, to where the artist was well, or actually, to where the city where they were going to put it. But if the pieces, like if the, if the pieces of the manufacturing were mm -hmm. laying around, then since it was carved, they hadn't moved it because they wouldn't have stolen the pieces. you say that. The only... The only thing I think may go against that is I think the Aztecs were were, were stealing things and taking it to Tenochtitlan. There are there's a lot of Olmec stuff in so Tenochtitlan when the Spanish But those statues specifically, I mean. Those statues specifically. Yeah. But the Aztecs had the Aztecs at Tenochtitlan, they had they had bigger ones that come from that same basalt quarry even further away. But the, but so the, they had the ability to move the, that size of a stone yeah, long the, distances. Yeah, the Aztecs figured it out. So here's the thing that I didn't know about the Aztecs before this last trip is that whole city is like an Atlantis in itself. It, it was so miraculous. And the Aztecs, like we were talking about, um, you know, were standing on the shoulders of giants, the people that had come before us. That's what the Aztecs were. They had... They had conquered all of the knowledge of all of Mesoamerica around them, and they were essentially usurpers of all the different cultures. And it was the city was so amazing that there were Spaniards that were going up, that were coming up to Cortez, and they were like, like "Are we dreaming this? This is." I mean, we we could they couldn't even believe what was happening, and that was an, that's a direct quote: "Is mm. is have I have I dreamt what I've seen?" They had. I, they had um, they had temples with a roof that was cut off of the temple, and they had a ref, like a flat reflection pool on the top of the temple. And on the temples, the hieroglyphs that were on the facade of the inside of the temple, when you would that you would sit in these chairs and look down at the reflection pools, and you would watch the night sky and the stars move, and they oh, were man. marking and calculating where the stars were. And the, because they had stolen all of the Maya like uh, knowledge of astronomy. And 
they had um, they had entire zoos. They were capturing animals in South America and in North America, further up in North America, and bringing it to Mexico City or Tenochtitlan. And they had their own zoos, and they had their own archaeological departments. So they had arche- the Aztecs had archaeologists traveling to the Olmec world, and we know that because they they named those people the Olmecs, which means the rubber people. The rubber people. And that was yeah. the people living where the Olmec heads were, but it, it's not the same culture mm-hmm. that created the Olmec heads. And so there are basalt monuments in Tenochtitlan that look to be recarved from Olmec monuments. And in fact, there's a, um, I'm preparing a, uh, like a video on this right now. There's a gigantic snake head that's that's in the that's in the Mexico City Museum. It doesn't have a description or anything. It's just sitting there, huge. Way I mean, half the size of this room, wow. uh, carved out of solid black basalt and insanely detailed. And you look at it and you think you think, okay, well that's just a head. And Dr. Barnhart took me the late uh, the next day and he's like, I want to show you something that I think's pretty interesting. You know that snake head that you pointed out? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, he goes come with me. And so. We go and look, we go to the um, Templo Mayor, which is uh, an excavated Aztec temple. And at the temple, they have the old, um, cath- you know, the Spanish cathedrals. And they built a cathedral, of course, on top like of, right. of their main pyramid. <laughs> but these old um, columns from the 1600s that are made out of black basalt that are discarded to the side of, of the cathedral are, are still sitting there today. Some of them are turned over. Some of them are laying flat the way they used to be. But, you know, they're the bottom of columns just like the Greeks and the Romans had, but they're gigantic. And the ones that are turned to the side have these curves in them with these little ribs or they're, they're ribbed like this and they have these little lips on the side. And he goes, he goes, what does that look like to you? I'm like, I don't know. And he goes, he goes, look harder. What do you, what do you think that looks like? I know you know what that looks like. I'm like, what? <laughs> and he goes, he goes, he goes, that's the belly of a snake. And yeah. I go, oh, wait, what? <laughs> and we go around this church and look at all these discarded gigantic columns. Sure enough, they cut up sections of that, of the snake's body that belonged to that head and, and made column columns out of, out of it, it, which means that that Crap. head was a gigantic <laughs> state snake, bigger than I can possibly imagine. It's something you have to see in person. And that's like something that you wouldn't know unless you went there and saw it. And they think that that, that those could have been recarved or stolen Olmec monuments. We just don't really know um, the vastness of, of Olmec monumental artwork a- another example is he- you guys have seen tenon heads before they have them in teotihuacan they have them at chavin de hantar but a tenon head is basically it's this rock or i'm sorry it's this stone head with a little tenon on the back where you can slide it into a temple mm. facade if that makes sense yeah. so that tenon will will secure it in there so at chavin de hantar you have these tenon heads that are the same size as a human head with a little tenon on the back, and they slide it in. You've seen them at, at Tiwanaku. Yeah, the, the wall little, of faces. The little heads. Yeah. yeah, so those are those are tenon heads. So you got them at Tiwanaku, Shavinde, Hantar, and you have them at Teotihuacan. You have these huge, um, you know, the Temple of the Sun and the, and the Temple of Quetzalcoatl in Mexico City. You have these huge he- uh, stone heads of uh, Quetzalcoatl and Chak and with these big tenons that are slid in the back. Dude, the tenant, the Olmec tenant heads, I didn't even know that they existed. The heads are this big around. <laughs> and the tenon is like this long and this big around. And they slid it into the side of earthen temples. Uh, just biz- it's bizarre, right? But yeah, yeah. It, they they were they were earthen temples made out of like um uh, made out of just pounds of packed dirt. But they would have sheer sides that were straight up and down and they'd have tenon heads placed in them. But seems... tenon heads that just dwarf, completely dwarf anything else in the entire world. Just bizarre, <laughs> bizarre culture. <laughs> so, okay, we'll keep going. Tenon heads. That's... So you have these you have these giant mosaic floors. This, this is one of the weirdest things. So uh, they're roughly 15 by 20 feet and they consist of up to 485 blocks of serpentine a piece. They come from the Sierra de la Tuxla regions of Guatemala. Uh, I'm sorry, they come from the Sierra de la Tuxla region and Guatemala. Uh, one mosaic floor consists of 28 layers and weighs more than a thousand tons. 
So what you're seeing right here, that's one layer. You can see the layer underneath it. And there's usually 28 of these layers all together weighing 1,000 tons, all created at one time and then buried. So do you think that the 28 is like a lunar... Uh, it's probably it probably is okay yeah it, but but other than that we don't know the significance of it no one's decoded the patterns in these i mean have they excavated one completely and seen all the different layers they've excavated five i believe or x-rayed them or whatever but so they they've mapped the the layers of tiles yeah so that so so you know they find the parameters of them and how far they go out yeah. and then they dig down the sides but they don't i think only one of them the one at laventa they've completely taken the entire thing apart and they labeled and marked each tile to know where <laughs> to put it back at yeah but the other ones they didn't take them apart they just dug straight down all the way around and kept it sitting up just to see but they're all 28 28 layers so no significance in the pattern like they haven't found like oh this pattern represents something you know we're just so disconnected wow. i mean we just don't we God. just don't know anything about the olmecs that's that's really the problem is is basically this whole presentation um you're gonna learn what we don't know you know what it cool. reminds me of you remember um an athem the tile, yeah. the tile the, patterns. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got the seven-piece tile pattern or the six-piece. Yeah. Well, it has... They're non-repeating. Like, yeah. Well, no, it's a, ton, it's a ton of tiles and there's a line. And every tile has a line going through it, curved, straight, whatever, corner of it. And the point is, is that you can put this whole thing together and make a single tile floor in this square that's designed for it and have the line be continuous and non-crossing through the entire thing. It's a, it's a puzzle where you have to be able to look at all the tiles and build mm -hmm. the whole thing in your brain and then put it all together. All, well, you can't, you can't do it. Uh, I thought it was a, so I had a, but you know, most likely anyway, the, you know what it is, but I thought, <laughs> I thought it was like you, you have a set of geometric tiles, different shapes, and you need a certain set where you can tile and f completely fill the space without ever having the pattern repeat. Yeah. And like people have narrowed it down to like nine tiles and then some other mathematician guy figured out he could do it with seven. And then this other guy figured out he could do it with like six. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. That's, yeah, that's like uh, Penrose tiling. Oh, that's maybe what I'm thinking. Yeah, no. In Anathem, it was, a, it was similar. The tiles are different shapes or whatever, but there's also a line and you have to, okay. you know, if I'm remembering correctly. But anyway, they... Anytime somebody came and solved it, which was very rare, and remember this culture lasts tens of thousands of years, they would print a new set of tiles and then set them out there. Where uh, in the world is this? This is a science it's a, it's fiction. A, it's a fiction. Oh, okay. okay. But I, I'm just saying this reminds me because because they wouldn't take it apart mm -hmm. and let somebody, they would get a new set of tiles and put them out there and then somebody would come along and sit there and look at it for a couple of days and then put it together and then make a single continuous line uh, in a totally uh, different okay. configuration and it would be on top of the other tiles. And so over time, yeah, yeah, you'd end up with a, a stack of tiles, and each one was like some you know perceptual mathematical genius because that's what it ha you have to be to put it together. Right, right. Somebody who can sit there and hold the pattern in their head all at once, and and then move it around in their head until they get the pattern right, and then and then build it from one end to the other. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, you know, sort of similar thing they think. But you're saying this was all done at the same time. All done How at do the they same know time that? And then buried. Dating? Um, yes. Um, so I asked the same question, and um, there was a geologist on this tour as well, and he and Dr. Barnhart agreed that when you're excavating a site, it's it's they, they said it's one of the most obvious things to see when dirt is all packed right at the same time. Mm. Uh, they, they just – they explained it in a certain way that made sense, but – about. I, I, you know, took it as it's probably true that they were like, like, yeah, when, when dirt is all packed at the same time, it's packed in such a way that you can just tell that it, this hmm. all was laid at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he said, he explained it, he explained that there would be different variations and okay, different so things you'd find packed in with the dirt. Yeah, so can right. I ask some questions? Sure. They, these are set into the ground. So, yeah. So they buried these big pits. I, man, I bet you I have a... Oh, I do have a photo of that in in here. Of they have a diagram of, of what these pits looked like. You want me to skip to it? Sure. I, yeah, it's not on the screen right now. Okay. Anyway. <clears throat> so what I was getting at is there you go. They dug a pit right there, that middle one. Okay. So they dug a pit, and then they that's the first level of uh, Mario. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's definitely a water level. <laughs> 
So they dig a pit, and then, so the to, so to find these tiles, they had to uncover them because they were covered in dirt, or whatever. Then they see the top layer, and then they dig all around it. Right, I'm I'm asking mm-hmm. this, is, and they dig all around it, and they say, okay, all this dirt was put in at the same time around the outside of this big cube of tiles. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what they that's what they. That think just means the cube of tiles was buried all at once. It doesn't mean that they put them down all at the same time. Unless they excavated that pit first. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but if they excavated the pit to start building the tiles, then most likely they were built all at once, meaning like in a short period of sure, time. Sure, Because otherwise the walls would start eroding and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you'd have like vegetation growing. Well, and, and it rains all the time. Yeah, so, so it, it had to be a fairly short period of time if they excavated it before they, you know what I'm saying? Or somebody else could have, I don't know. Yeah, well. Somebody else could have so excavated that, that's what it and they then think reburied is that, They it. think that, that by studying, studying the layers, they could. I would just, still be interested in. Dating of organic material between, between tile layers. layers. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah, yeah. I, and with something like that, it's tough to track down anything like that. Yeah, and the they, and they may be saying, so, well, like, it, it looks like they were built so close to each other that the resolution of the dating wouldn't show us any difference mm, anyway. Sure, But sure. I, I would still be interested, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because... I think there's but secrets there's, here. There's no, yes. Yeah, I mean, there's no known reason as to why they did this. Oh, also, I should say that the pattern of each layer is different. Mm -hmm. So it's a different picture every time. It's a different um, pattern. And they don't really know what any of the patterns mean. So the the one of the five that they found... um, It's always serpentine? It's not different types of material? It's always serpentine. Okay. And they they come... what? <laughs> no, then it's just Snakes. funny. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are our people. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Giant but snakes. It, it does. Serpentine. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it does look like some kind of. Um, well, like it, it could be a game. It could be a ritual exercise. It could be uh, some kind of intelligence effort. You know, like how smart are you? Can you, can you build. Uh, mm. 28 layers all with different patterns with, with this group of tiles. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, of course, the, the traditional explanation is, well, it's just an offering. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's an offering. To and, who? And it's religious. <laughs> to the yeah. snake. Yeah. Now, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though, is that we we don't definitively know any Olmec gods. They're, they, I mean, they have tons of stone artwork, but it's really arguable. Okay, so to, it's a, it's as, an offering to who to whoever they have worshipped. Yeah, it's <laughs> really it's really arguable as to whether or not. I mean, did they really have gods? Because yeah. we see on Monument 19, we see that serpent. That's the only time we see that serpent in the in the Olmec world. Though. Oh, the dragon thing above that, the guy's that head? dragon. Yeah, yeah, that's the only time we see it. It's amazing. Another question is, why? How does it look so aesthetically? perfect like that i mean it's yeah it has a style to it how long does it take to develop uh how long does it take for artisans to get to a point where you where you have an actual art style it's that goes very along distinctive yeah clear yeah, art yeah. Style, i mean yeah. how do you you know there must be there must be a lot of um timber artwork that is totally lost to us probably man probably thousands of years of, of timber little statues and totem pole style things that are just dust today you know um but yeah, that's that's it's like the the Olmecs begin doing this. They start doing this. There's nothing in the archaeological record prior to this. Just so to our evidence, it looks like they start out with that. That's yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, to our yeah. evidence. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Um, the Teglon. Thanks, Watcher. That's the name of the tile game in the book that I was talking about. It's called the Teglon. Yeah, it's a it's a mathematical and geometrical exercise, which is sort of similar to like I was thinking like it's some kind of mathematical geometric. You know exercise. what, man. Oh, I'm just having a conversation with Dr. Barnhart about this. So we talked before, uh, maybe in the first part of the podcast, about Pakal. Uh, the, yeah. he's, the, he's the greatest Maya king. He's buried in the Temple of Inscriptions at Palenque. And of all the things that he could have been buried with, what is he holding? A cube and a sphere. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Geometers. He's, he's, he's squaring the circle. <laughs> yeah. And, and I talked to Dr. Barnhart about that last week, and he was telling me that the that a part of Maya religion and and the importance of I guess their religion, but that can mean that you know a whole wide array of things. Their culture for the elite 
was sacred geometry and and numbers and that could have been a part of their religion that is totally lost to us today because i mean he could have been buried with anything and he was buried with a cube and a circle yeah. i mean how profound is that yeah so He's cubing the sphere what we could be seeing here is is the very beginnings of sacred geometry but it's it's like impossible to decode it yeah you know 3300 years later it's hard to you know at least 3300 years later it's yeah. hard to know well what exactly are they studying so this one right here this next slide well, we need to take a break can we take oh a break i'm sorry yeah yeah, yeah 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 okay but i would i would say because you know this whole thing with with religion and, and the, if if you read john anthony west and i i kind of agree with him on this and he's not the only one that thinks this is that the ancients did not disting distinguish between religion and science they were the same exactly exactly right? that the study of the universe to them was what that to them was looking it was a spiritual endeavor right in a way so it's like or maybe i'm saying it wrong but it's they did not have a distinction between these two things i'm, I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna, i mean it's all the universe in the end right? yeah i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you exactly what uh i don't know if you guys want to splice this i'm gonna tell you exactly what dr barnhart told me yeah no splicing on this podcast yeah, sorry sorry you're talking about he said, uh, <laughs> let me see he said he said he said um I texted him and I said, I said, what an amazing thing to be buried with. Maybe it's an obvious statement, but that has to be one of the most significant aspects of my archaeology that I think people aren't talking about enough is what he was holding. And I said, uh, I said, kind of like what you were saying about how we were probably wrong in interpreting their religion. We don't even fully realize the significance of their geometry either. He could have been buried holding anything but he chose to, but he chose the sphere in the cube and he he responded he said he said pretty cool huh recognizing the geometry of the natural world may well have been a key part of their religion it yes. was it was for it was for asian cultures as well yes so, and what's crazy is that their artwork is so similar i'm going to show you guys some stuff here that's like if i told you that that this was found in india you would you would be like you know and i didn't yeah. say it was olmec you would just think it was indian yeah. you know it's really cool all right. That's awesome. We'll be right, right back. Hell yeah. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Snake Bros podcast, joined by Luke Caverns. And the Watcher is here. We didn't mention. Yes, yes, we yeah. failed to mention the Watcher. Hold on, Watcher, don't come on yet. <laughs> Got to wait till the music dies. Oh, because well, it's the old setup. Yeah, it's it's going to be far superior when I get this board <laughs> rolling. But uh, yeah, okay, Watcher, how you doing, old boy? How's it going up there in space? <laughs> Oh, I was super excited to have Luke back on again. So far, the first segment was freaking amazing. I love all of this stuff. It's so cool. Thank you, man. And uh, it's also a privilege to see some of this stuff, you know, that you're sharing for the first time, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. it's yeah, a I privilege agree. to be here with you guys. Man. You honor us, man, by, by bringing this presentation here to yeah, the show. I really do. appreciate it. Well, thank you. I'm excited to show you guys some of these things. So publicly, I mean... I mean, maybe you can see some of this stuff maybe on the deepest, darkest corners of the internet, but uh, <laughs> I have not ever publicly shown any of this yet. Just working on my videos to present it, um, but I think this would be a cool place to to actually talk about it. Um, Hell yeah. And just get y'all's opinions on, you know, everything. So, um, so this is one of the most amazing things that I saw. So the first time, <laughs> the first time I, I walk up to it, I th I thought that it was like okay well maybe it's a maybe it's an uh, so it's it's basalt almost everything we're gonna see here is basalt and I thought okay maybe this is a head that uh, half of the head has been buried and and for whatever reason I couldn't airdrop the video where I 360 this but I thought that okay the left side has obviously been eroded away and the right side you know was buried but no 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 no. i don't think so this no, is a piece no. of art this is a this is a piece of art yeah. because on the back right side of this and the left side are two half jaguar half human hands that are ripping the head in half whoa and 
so that that's a piece of arc and it's showing it it's showing either a monster like which is a it's a were jaguar i mean that that is what that is the only thing that we know is a deity figure or it's something that the Some olmecs kind of, are, are yeah. able to access or they're able they're able to become this were jaguar figure but it, it is the hands of a were jaguar ripping this guy's head in half or his head is is there's iconography in the mesoamerican world of when people transform and become something different they go they they turn into a billow of smoke it's his head turning into smoke so yeah. it could be it could be he's turning into a billow yeah. of smoke uh, just it's fascinating and, and this looks like it's small but it's probably about this big yeah it's it's huge and i found yeah, the, the basalt does not weather like that on the left i, I no, i've no. never seen any basalt weather in that fashion so yeah. that looks like they they carved Made it into it. that yeah i mean i've seen limestone Big scoops taken out of that thing yeah i've seen limestone weather like that yeah but basalt now i think but i, I have, could be wrong i mean it's i just, think i have in here if you'll put it put the camera back on us real quick uh i think i have in here i sent it over yes oh thank goodness <laughs> okay <laughs> check this out so we're going through the museum uh, yeah you you put it back up um so we're going through the museum and you can see behind i mean there's little labels there but it's basically just what the archaeologists that work there and you know there's maybe like five archaeologists that work at the site and it's kind of what they think it might be and um but nothing really concrete and so i'm in this little bitty museum there's there's a section on the left there's a section on the right and there's an old mech head sitting in the center, sitting in the center of them. And all it is, is just a little protective house where they've got the monuments kind of stashed away. And it's just this random assortment of, uh, of monuments. And so there's a lot of room and Dr. Barnhart was saying this over and over and over. He was saying there's a lot of room for people to come in here and study these artifacts from a lot of different perspectives. And there's there's so much more that we can learn and uncover and there's a lot of discoveries to be made still and kind of putting things together and so i think something that i saw that even the the archaeologist that was there i, I guess he hadn't noticed it before but he thought that it's plausible was i saw the hands on the back of on the back of this guy right here kind of pulling his head in half and i thought well this is connected to something. It's connected to some larger um, statue. And at first I had thought like maybe this is something where it, it was a wear, it was a statue of a wear jaguar pulling somebody's head in half. And so the actual body of the wear jaguar is lost or it was taken somewhere. And so we keep walking around it. And sure enough, outside of the museum, underneath the awning, I see, oh, no, no, no. Is this not the full thing? Oh, this is the back side of the uh oh here it is aha look at that it's a sphinx it, it is a Whoa. let me let me pull these together it is a it is a sphinx so those hands right there come up to yeah so those hands right there and i i would i was walking back and forth and looking and seeing if it if it all measures correctly mm -hmm. and i'm going to go back in december um and and bring you know measure this whole thing out but i'm pretty certain that this is the exact same statue that this was sitting on top of it doesn't the colors look a little bit different here but it's just because of the lighting it's the exact same stone so the hands are coming up to the back of this the hands statue. are coming up so it, it is it is this sphinx's and that, it looks like it's small but it's huge um i mean those hey. I know how big those Mexican <laughs> tiles are, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, those are big. You know? I mean, you put your foot on it, and you're, it's, it's wider than your foot. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And so, but those where those little arms are are extending out match perfectly with where the hands were on the back of the head. So it is an Olmec wear jaguar sphinx ripping its own head in half. And just just amazing. Wow. And so here's some of the details. You have these drapes that are flowing down the back, and he's got these anklet bracelets, and it's got the tail coming around the side. Um, and then you can see more of kind of this little ankle bracelet that's on it. It could be it could be that he's actually wearing clothes, or he's wearing pants of some kind. And then you can see the detail on the claws. The, I, don't, I don't understand the placement of the arms. Yeah, it looks like the the human part of the body would be turned, turned facing turned the facing body up. Yeah, yeah, 
facing the body of like the his, lion. His arms or the are like this. It it could be it. Where it, his, but, the, but the cat is on its belly. His elbows are here, so like yeah, yeah. So it's like this head would be facing the back end of the jaguar body. It's well. Here here's another here's another thing is is when you're studying Mesoamerica. Um, Anything that we think makes sense just goes out the window because they, <laughs> they don't have any problem with like conflating a lot of different ideas and doing crazy things because we'll sh we'll show it later in, in this presentation. There are um, there are, there are acrobats in in Olmec iconography. These people contorting their bodies in really strange mm -hmm. ways. So this could this could okay, be, so could be contorted. Yeah. yeah, this could be his body. He's is, twisted around. His body and facing is spinning up. around yeah. and he's ripping yeah. his own head off it's just like he's it, fighting himself it, it, yeah it's like anyone's best guess as to what it exactly is happening sure, here and yeah. they don't have any problem with conflating there are tons tons of of monuments where it is depicting a stone that is also a jaguar or it's depicting a mountain that is also a jaguar that is also a person all in one statue it's just they don't have any problem mixing all of these things together and so it's it's hard yeah to make i was sense thinking that that like it's actually the body the the midsection of the body is actually turned around sure yeah, yeah. right like it's twisted over facing its own back yeah so that yeah but then but then again the hands are also up like this so if that were the case, the hands would be. You'd have to see which side the thumbs are on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I've got photos, but they wouldn't airdrop to my. Mm. Um, I, I want to try because I want you guys to see this, but they won't airdrop to. So to if my, the thumbs are on the outside, then the hands are like this. But if they're, if they're on the inside, then it's. There we go. It's doing it now. Thank goodness. Okay. I don't know. Anyways. We can analyze this statue all day. I know, I know. We should. <laughs> Let's do the um, whole podcast on it. <laughs> okay, the okay. exploding head. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to import these. We'll, we'll look at these real quick. It kind of reminds me of the this, you know, the gin too, like the the uh, the yeah, blue the, smoke. Yeah, the smoke, the the, the smokeless fire spirits. Yeah. There we go. That's that's the uh, that's the claw on the back of it. Oh, I see it. Yeah, but wow. I guess thumbs I guess on the right, inside. I, it looks yeah, like that's, that's, that's another one. Oh, it's a but different one. In 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 person, it wait, was. Wait, this is the skull. This is. I mean, I'm it's sorry. On, it's the back. This is the back of that head. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when yeah. you're looking at it, when you're looking at it, that's the back of the left side. When you look at it. So is this is this the left hand and the right hand is over here? No, no, no. So or no. So so that's the right hand and it's so the that, left hand is on the other side. That archaeologist, he is facing left it straight on here. the way the way that we were looking at it earlier. So the left side that's all uh, carved away and, and contorted that's built up in smoke on the back of that is what you're seeing right right mm -hmm. here. And yeah. then so there is a hand on the other side as well and I got a 360 video of it but it, it's not sending over so to So look at my mouse there's a hand over here there is a hand and right a there. hand here okay yes. got it yeah yep. and the okay. thumbs are facing the inside yes the and thumbs the way are so there's po the arms should be pointing away so it's like the elbows like the elbows are actually coming back like this almost mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah, it's it's really strange. We got, you know what this means? We have to go there yeah, to see it. It's yeah, just yeah, it's, <laughs> it's obvious we're not going to figure it out from here. When I was there, when I was there, I was thinking about you guys a lot. I was like, I was like, man, I would love for these guys to 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 be here and to have you know your perspective and all the things you've seen traveling around the world, especially being in Egypt. I feel like there's so much perspective that you have that could be very useful in the Olmec world as well because there's awesome. so much like this. So we'll, we'll just continue. All right. um, so one crazy thing about the Olmecs is they have at least one sphinx or yeah. of some kind looking, you know, <laughs> yeah, some that is weird wild. looking sphinx. Uh, and that's, these are, um, these are uh, some of the claws and the detail. Now in the photos, they look kind of blown out and like the, the details are hazy. When you're there in person, it's crisp, you okay. know, very, very detailed. Um, here's, this is a picture of a picture of that bird that I was talking about, but the head is chopped off uh, and that bird is, so some of these are kind of disor, a little bit disorganized. I'm not sure why the bird photos are jumbled around. Here we go. So there's, there's that bird and you can see this guy standing wow, over here. Wow. Look at that. They, yeah. they are, it's a gigantic statue and you can tell, I mean, it looks like, like an obscure statue that would be off to the side of a temple in Egypt. You know, mm -hmm. just 
I had no idea that they had these big megalithic bird statues. And of course, you know, the head is it also looks the head is lost. Persian. Like the it, you're right. Yeah. It does look very Middle Eastern. Yeah. Another thing, I mean we'll we'll get to it, but I mean I have a very strong suspicion that, that Phoenicians had yeah. had an interaction with with Olmecs as well. Um but you're so right that it does look Persian. Yeah. And Watcher saying Assyrian. So yes, like that yes, that region, Assyrian. that area. Yeah. You know what? I need to that's a that's a great idea. If I go look through if I go look through art history of ancient Persia and there's something that's similar to that, yeah, how yeah. weird would that be? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, or or Assyrian or you know, anything that's Mesopotamian. Yeah. Babylonian, Assyrian, Persian, yes, yeah. any of that. Yeah. yeah. Anything around the twin rivers. Yeah. So here's here's another one. This is uh a, a, the side of a box. So I saw a ton of these basalt boxes. Now, of course, they're not square, they're not perfect or anything, but they have these really crazy looking cuts. I'm not exactly sure how how they're done. So this is the side of a box. And I'm not sure why they're when it's they're a imported. Beautiful design. Um, I'm not wow, sure why that statue was cool. Why when they're imported? So here's part of that box. Here's another one. That's that's basalt wow. right there. Wow. Um, the shells, man. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that's really really cool. So this is interesting because it's been glued back together. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, been it's okay. been repaired. Now this is interesting because this is a massive. I mean, it probably it would just you know. Crush this table. It's, it's yeah. probably no, the no, same no, not the this table. table. Not this <laughs> table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This but I just mean solid. it's it's huge. You know, these these things are massive. Now the thing is, it's carved as though it is an Olmec box or monument, but it was found at Tenochtitlan, which is the mm -hmm. Aztec capital. So they're bringing a lot of stuff from the Olmec world to the Aztec capital. Um, so the Aztecs were like the Romans. It, they're exactly like the Romans. Yeah, actually conquered a bunch of people. And, and the dragged Maya over. are exactly like the Greeks. Uh, the Maya are all city states. They're warring against each other. They have all of the sign. I mean, I mean, literally, it. The parallels are insane. The Maya world are are made of city states that are the pinnacle of all of science and culture in their entire area but they cannot stay on top because they can't get along with each other. The Romans are like a cheap knockoff version of the Greeks, but they, they conquered they the Greeks together. because they could stick together. <laughs> and the Aztecs conquered Mesoamerica because they could stick together. Um, and they usurped all the knowledge of Mesoamerica and created their empire. And had the Spanish not showed up you know, and brought disease, the Aztecs would have ruled for who knows how long. Um, it's, hmm. just, it's just amazing the the parallels between two different sides of the planet and they have the same patterns and geomet they have the same geometrical patterns which is something that well, else that we'll get into but the greeks and the maya for all their similarities of of being the height the pinnacle of their own culture science and astronomy and um and even agriculture as well well i should say egypt had the agriculture on lock as well but um they even have the same geometrical patterns on the facades of their temples, the Maya and the Greeks do. You have those spirals. Yep. Uncanny, hmm. man. Uncanny. And we're going to get to that uh, as well. And the Olmecs had that. So here's some of these boxes here. So that is, we don't really know. Um, That's awesome. Look at that. We don't really know oh, if, this, crap. if this is an Aztec or if it is a... Um, Olmec is, monument because it's it's made out of basalt from the Sierra de la Tuxla, um So look at the hands on that quarries. thing. They're also in the wrong. So uh, there's something interesting going on with the hands here. Ah, that there's, is interesting. There's the four thumbs hands. are on the top. Yeah, it's 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 doing like this. Yeah. Mm. Uh, like somebody, and then there's four. Like yes, yeah, so you're right. Yeah. Like somebody's coming out of it. Yeah. Or they're pushing their way. But through. look, it's it's. It's actually two things facing each other like mirrored. See the yes, serpent see. heads yeah, facing right. each mm -hmm. their faces are going into each other like they're Yeah, you're right. They're going into a split a mirror. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Each the, other. the faces are going into each other and it's one face at the same time. God, yeah, it is. It looks like a It's the reptilians, bro. The, Look at that. It kind of looks like an owl face. The whole head looks uh, it's just but uh, I don't know. Monstrous. Absolutely bizarre iconography. It's, it's just, freaking cool, it's totally dude. bizarre. And I'm pretty sure that's a Lovecraft God thing. That's what it looks like. And, and, and I need a skull belt like that. <laughs> God, that is a cool skull belt. And it's, it's obviously gigantic, but we don't know. I mean, is this really Aztec or is it Olmec? Because those are the only two cultures that we really associate 
with having carved monuments out of basalt. Is that a like a a, a kilt of snakes? Yeah. I think it's anyone's best guess. I mean, that is like, it exactly looks like what it that looks is. like woven it, it, it is. snakes. Yeah. Oh, I mean, because you can see that's the head of a snake there. That's the yeah. Head that's of a snake it's there. it's braided serpents. Holy crap! There, that that might be. I think that's the. I think that's a rattle there. That's a rattle. So some of them are heads, and some of them are rattles. This is the like bottom. the like the male Medusa. Now, now <laughs> see this rattle right here is the same rattle that you see on Monument Nineteen. See this rattle right there. Oh. It's it's the same it's the same style. So you have this serpent dragon looking thing here, but he has a rattle on the end of it. And uh, in person, it's very easy to tell okay. that he has the rattle of a rattlesnake. But okay. he's obviously not a rattle, not just a rattlesnake. He's yeah. a some kind of dragon god like serpent being. Um, so the next thing that really surprised me is I'm sure you guys have seen the Aztec solar disc before. Yeah. Um, I had always thought that that was the size of a giant plate or something. Mm -mm. I had absolutely no idea that it was this big. Yeah, just <laughs> huge, <laughs> just wow. gigantic. And on top of and that, it's basalt. And oh, you guys want to uh, see something else? Wait, 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 wait. Tell me wait. that's tell me that's not the Big Dipper. Yeah, right I was going to say that the thing oh, on this side. This wait, I don't know the why thing it's... around the side of it is that part of it. These. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, so the disc is on actually a larger stone, and those dots on there are part of it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So so this was on the top of the Temple of Mayor, which which was the main the the gigantic Aztec pyramid where the emperor facing up or down? Facing the sky. Okay. Facing the sky. And so this right here Wait. Yeah, just give it a, give it a second oh, to I'm zoom sorry, in. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all right. So um so that floor next to it that you can see on the left that was part of the floor at the top of the temple. And so the Spaniards describe, describe the top of the temple as being dotted with constellations in the sky. So if you were standing at the top of the pyramid, you'd have this disc, and then the entire floor of the very top of the pyramid was dotted with constellations. So tell me that's not the Big Dipper or Shh. something like that. With your cursor, what, what are you talking about? So Oh, oh. So you see this right here? Mm. Looks, it looks like, you know, a different culture's interpretation of, of oh, the I big see. Yeah, or little four dipper. four stars at the end and the curve, yeah. So here's Too the actual... dots on the handle, but yes. Dipper, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, it's... I'm not seeing it, but that's all right. It's their interpretation of, of something like that. Yeah. What's, you know, imagine it like facing straight up and down. So... We've also seen in Egypt and Turkey... I mean, I see a little dipper... Yeah. Right there, and then the curve, like this could be a dipper. Yes, that's what he's talking about. Well, right and this right here. So you see this right here? That looks like, I don't know if, if that's showing up. That Oops. looks like it's that looks like it's a little cup, you know? And then so you've got the handle right here, and it's I connecting. I don't know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't, but I'm just saying it. That, that the Spaniards say that the top of the temple was aligned with constellations. Yeah. So when I see that, I think like, oh, maybe that looks yeah. like... Show it to Matheson. See what um, he says. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> he, may, he may have something. Yeah. So what's really interesting is that this, this um, solar disk here is actually one of five. And each generation created a new one. So there's five generations of different discs that are beneath this one. And they're all on display at the uh, at the Temple of Myora Museum. But they're not all discs. Like, this is the most sophisticated one. Another one they think is the interpretation of a god being, like, thrown down into hell. And she, her body's all mutilated. And I, I may have a photo somewhere. But it's the exact same size as this. And when they pulled this off of the top of that temple, they found another one underneath they pulled that Just one like out. the tiles they found another one underneath. Like the tile floors exactly they pulled wow. that one out they found another one underneath and they found another one yeah fifth it, son yeah five sons oh yeah oh mind really blown. okay wait, wait. Mind go, blown. go into this go into this because this is something <laughs> this is something i'm not uh yeah so that the idea of the of the different sons different ages right and each son is a, a god and has its own aspect own uh what would you call it personality and that that governs the climate and everything, including human consciousness, right? And then eventually the age gets old because the God gets old and then the world dies. Basically, it ends and then you have a new sun and a new God. No way. Right? And so you're saying there were five of them and they yeah. definitely thought the, the latter, latter Aztecs thought they were in the 
ending age of the fifth son that the god was old and you know mm-hmm. so there if there are yes, five of them okay, stacked okay, on top okay, of each other yeah. it makes sense yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> that actually scared me <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay okay i get what you're saying now yes that's yeah. that's interesting yeah and I, i'm not i'm not an expert on the aztecs i mean that's a whole other you know yeah, thing. but yeah. but very very interesting and in seeing some of the connections to um See the, the old see the god in the center of that? Yeah. Old. He looks old. Yeah. He's angry. Uh, I bet his tongue is sticking out. I can't really see yeah, it. Yeah, it looks Well, like how it, much right? does it look like Medusa as well? Yeah. I mean, that, that's, yeah, that's a whole other thing. But they, little... but they would depict the tongue sticking out, which meant like he's, uh, at least in some, I can't remember if the Aztecs thought this, but the tongue sticking out like that with the teeth and the, the grimace usually meant thirsty for blood, right? So, mm. um so this is part of the reason for all the sacrifices. They're trying to keep the god alive so that yes. the world doesn't end. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, and that's you know that's why they're doing eighty thousand sacrifices yeah. a day because they yeah. lost the ability to mm. count to the end of the age. So they knew it was coming, mm. but they didn't know when. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these are these are guesses. Obviously, nobody sure, knows, but sure. this is the idea. So it's like. But yeah, the I, I didn't. I never heard that they were stacked on top of each other. That's Here, awesome. Um, what is? Uh, oh, oh, sorry. sorry just the writing on the on the stones underneath. Is that what is that? Oh, that's just that is. I am not exactly some weird sh- thing that the archaeologists did. Yeah, I'm not exactly okay. sure what that is. It's it is not a part of the monument. It's, it's not an artifact. It looks like a, it looks like a giant chest of drawers sitting underneath the solar mm. counter, and, and it's not actually supporting it. I'm not sure at all what what that was i walked up to it is but it is it got writing on it no no oh. it's just it's just like, like hammered copper or something it's just like te- yeah it's like oh, okay. texture you know yeah it's it's not it's not writing um okay yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't you know ancient it looks like a very so detailed here, written explanation that is, of the thing. <laughs> those are the actual uh pieces of jewelry and things that pakal was holding in his hands on display here and sure enough you got the sphere and a cube in his hands. Mm. And, and of all things he could have been holding, you know, why was it that? It's just, yeah. You know. Man, that is wild. And of course, he's got something else going on there, too. <laughs> um, it's a jade belt buckle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, just fascinating. I I just thought how that, How good is the mask? You've seen it up close? Uh, it's, it's it's. I mean, like, what's the the craftsmanship? How is the craftsmanship? Oh, it's. I mean, it's pretty amazing that it's that it's you know cut out of so many different pieces of jade that have been glued together um, over time. But it's just these chips of jade that they you know carve into. I'm not even sure how they do it, but they they, they yeah, arrange but look, it like a look, puzzle. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So if the craftsmanship's good, then you can make some assumptions on how good an image is it is of mm-hmm. the person like but look at that guy. oh oh well we have we have um we have exact images of, of what pakal looks like okay. uh, made out of um wasn't yeah, he also really tall for a for a maya he's about five I mean, we he, he was five before. seven okay. yeah so which was tall for for a maya person um now we know exactly we know exactly what he looked like he okay. had a, he had a portrait made out of stucco of he and his wife and the heads were pulled off so not only did they have stone statues of their own people and they had jade masks made out of their own people and, and pottery masks made out of made out of their rulers they had um they had stucco statues that are on the facades of, of the of the palace at Palenque and it's like this stucco portrait in the and they're coming out of the wall like it think of like a like a greek or roman stoic statue like it looks in you know say it's carved in marble and it looks like it's emerging out of a temple wall like they're literally coming out of the wall for all of the palenque dynasties they have these along the walls as though they're honoring them but what's wow. really interesting is that when archaeologists came later on and all the heads are cut off they thought well i guess you know i guess palenque was conquered and they they ripped all the heads off, you know, kind of like they knocked the noses off of, yeah. off of Egyptian statues to basically you're knocking it down a peg, you know, you're yeah. taking away its significance. Well, they thought it was the exact same thing. Then when they break into Pakal's tomb, they look underneath the, cause the, the this, this gigantic limestone sarcophagi is set up on these other limestone logs, essentially. And there's this open space underneath it. 
They shine a flashlight down in there and they see two stucco heads there. <laughs> one is Pakal and one is Pakal's wife, which means that he was beheaded before he was closed into the tomb, mm. which shows how different their thinking is that he had this stucco statue made of him in his own palace during his life. And then when he died, they removed his head. They take the head and bury it with they him. They take the head and bury it with him. So all the statues that had happened before. All those statues are sitting in tombs somewhere, somewhere in Palenque. And they haven't, they found, haven't yeah. found them. Wow. Yeah. They've only found Pakal and huh. his mom. Now they know where um, they know where his two sons are buried, but they haven't excavated it yet, which is crazy. I mean, that Pakal's tomb is like one of the biggest discoveries ever made. And his two sons are buried right next to him, and they haven't gone in and excavated it for hmm. what reason, I don't know. Um, or at least they think. I mean, you have these two other pyramids right next to him, and they assume, well, it's probably, you know. But didn't they assume that all the other pyramids were also tombs, and they haven't found any bodies in those? Um, well. Pakal's the only one known to have been buried beneath one of those things, right? Uh, so in the fashion that he's buried in. But, but. So you have this. You oh, have wait, this, maybe you said it last time. You said it was. We know that that was specifically built for him to be as a, as a tomb. Yes, yes, okay. and, and so there's there's a threshold as well. So when you get beyond uh, about 200 AD, it starts being all of the pyramids have bodies in them. Before that, none of them have bodies. Uh, in them. So okay. there's there's a threshold, and I mean that's not that's not a firm date. Yeah, but by Pakal's time. All of the pyramids have bodies in them. At Copan, which is another city, and they're that's sure the they're not intrusive. Oh yeah, positive. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, very, very positive because okay. they found so many of them. Okay. Um, but it's before that when you go back to El Mirador and you have the biggest Maya pyramids, there are no bodies in them. But there are rooms inside of those temples that they they do this radar sensing and they can they sense these voids in them and they've dug into just one of the one of these voids that was on that was near ground level of course the ground has risen up around the pyramid so it's actually what they think may be the second or third floor of the pyramid and they tunnel in through and there's no photos of this anywhere and this is at El Mirador, which is maybe the first Maya city in the deepest part of the Paten rainforest, in the Paten jungle in Guatemala. They tunnel in and they get, they break into this room and it is a perfectly preserved room of Maya murals that look exactly the same way, like painting fresco paintings with hieroglyphs and everything that look today the same way they did when it, it looks like it was painted and it was sealed shut hmm. and it looks the same way it did more than 2000 years ago and and they say even the president um or i'm sorry president of guatemala or whoever it is of guatemala even he hasn't gone in there because it's that locked down that it's but they say that there there are depictions of more gods in there or these divine beings that look like angels with wings that are that are totally foreign to what we understand as the Maya world that can be seen in there. Very, very few people have ever been in there. It's like the treasure of the Maya world that most people don't know about. Hmm. Wow. And uh, you have to like know somebody to know somebody just to hear that. So story. the room is empty except, but it's painted. That's what yeah. But all the walls are painted. Yeah. There's nothing else in there. Maybe that they said that. Yeah. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So wow. that's, it's cool, man. There's, there's a lot of, it's just, it's infatuating the, the, the Mesoamerican world. It's like one of those things that, that, that like, from the outside, before you've gone there, it's hard to kind of understand and, and have that fascination grip you. And then when you go there, it just makes sense because you realize like, oh my God, there's so much that we don't know about this. Yeah. this is, it's like studying a culture that may as well have lived on Mars because we just were not influenced by them. Nothing, like the way that we think about things when we, th when we think about things logically, um, or say logically, we have our own form of logic. You know, uh, this idea of gears turning, um, have you ever seen, have you ever seen the Mesoamerican calendar and they depict it as though it's gears turning? That is a Greek concept. The Mesoamericans did not have gears, did nothing. They, when they look at their calendar, the way that we organize it is we take the circles out of the calendar and we wind them together to show how they match up. They didn't even have the concept of a gear. It just wasn't, as far as we know, it just wasn't something that they thought of. Their their way of thinking is just totally alien to us. And so trying to study them is is really tough. Mm. Like, you may as well have been studying people living on a different planet because they 
they're just the way they think is totally different than us and, and it becomes infatuating you know um that's so, cool yeah, yeah wow yeah. okay so then we'll go to, we'll go to the next thing so these i thought these i thought are pretty interesting i will turn this on its side <clears throat> so these are olmec and they don't it looks like the basalt columns are placed down inside of them Hmm. But they have abs- they have absolutely no idea what these were used for. This is a dolmen door. It looks like a, a dolmen, dolmen door. door. Yeah. So I- explain that to you. like. <laughs> so again, the dolmen. It's like my t- term, but a dolmen. <laughs> you know, like I was saying, they have all the slabs of stone making and this a little is about, room. This is about five or six feet long. Yeah. yeah. And they and it, it's a l- tiny little room, and then the front, what is the door, is like a a slab with a little round portal in it could be this big around like there's no way in mm-hmm. other than through this what do you little... think is the purpose <laughs> i don't know yeah 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 <laughs> and there's so many different and you can you can see the basalt columns next to it and they yeah. look like maybe one would fit in there um and i don't know that anybody has ever tried but these are just thrown to the side next to a museum they're just piled up laying over there and i had to i had to i was looking for the bathroom when i saw these laying over by the bathrooms and, and i called up over one of the guys who was on the tour and i was like look at this nobody knew what it was the archaeologist there didn't know what it was but they're just discarded to the side of the museum whoa that's crazy. He's looking at a dolmen. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle will have to look it up and we can show it maybe. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. you go. That is crazy. It's a dolmen door. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. That, that, how weird is that? Yeah. <laughs> so, they, I mean, they don't know, you know, they this don't know what, the, what they the were Caucasus. What they were used for. Oh, check this out. So, you guys might, you guys might like this. Mm. So, I found some little, I guess, you know, these chisel holes. It doesn't look like something that you would see in Egypt. Um, but they had, they had underground, um, aqueduct systems and plumbing systems, just like they did in, uh, just like they did in ancient Rome and Greece. And so they're funneling water back to their cities, but there are these underground tubes and this tube is one that's, this tube is one that's broken in half, but they have these tubes that are like four or five, six feet long that are laid down next to each other with a hole straight through it. And, and again, you go to these Olmec museums. You guys, we'll go, we'll go. Yeah, we're gonna. Go. When you go, you guys will go up. You guys will walk up, and he'll go. You'll think, why are these laying on the ground? <laughs> like, <laughs> there's right a lot of stuff laying on the ground that you do that with in Egypt too. You're like, why is this just? <laughs> this is like a treasure. Here. Yeah, and it's just laying here. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it is mind blowing. In Egypt, there'd be a water bottle or two. Inside <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty that's pretty common here. And then this uh, next one, this is that's wow, the head of that so dude. Awesome. Oh my god! So now you can see that the the statue you were standing next to the 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 things that made the whole statue look like a face, like yep. those are the fangs of the serpent and, coming and out. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's um, and so this is what I was talking about that the bottoms of those columns are made out of the body of the snake. So Man. imagine seeing this thing in real life, a snake with a head that big, solid basalt, but imagine the rest of the body too. And so you, and it's anyone's best guess as to, you know, I doubt the snake is, was all one piece of solid basalt. Who knows? Maybe it was, or maybe it was multiple sections. That would be tough to have. I just, I just love the style, the art style of this. It's so... Well, how Asian does it look? I mean, it does. Yeah. It's just, I mean, if I, if I told you that was made in, in ancient China or Japan, you'd be like, yeah, you would have no question. Yeah. And then look, look off in the back. You see that, see this bird statue Mm -hmm. back here? There's a, there's a lot of stuff like that. And that, that thing right there is big. Like that is half this little bird in the back is like half the size of my whole body. Wow. It just, and, and you know, you got this little card right here, but basically all is it, all it's saying is, um, you know, serpent, serpent head discovered in Tenochtitlan at yeah. 15, you know, 1521 or well, something we, like we that. We need to take another break, but before we do, I have one question. Okay. How do they think that these guys carved this stuff? Like, were they flint tools only? They think, yeah, they think it was, they think it was flint chisels and, and, uh, like Mesoamerican hammers. And, um, and they may have had some, some other things as well, but very limited tools as well. Like they no attribute. copper. 
I think that there's a little bit of copper because the Aztecs start the Aztecs start getting a lot of metal. I say a lot of metal, a lot of metal for Mesoamerica. But the Olmecs. Oh, the Olmecs? No, no. They uh, carved this yeah. with rubber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just yeah. erased. <laughs> yeah, they, they just used erasers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They erased the rock. <laughs> um, no, no, the Olmecs. The Olmecs. No. Um, so the Olmecs are supposed to have no no metallurgy. So they're supposed to have carved those heads out of basalt with flint. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, no metallurgy in 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 the Olmec world. Aztec, limited, very limited. Um, but in the Olmec, yeah, it's 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 a toss up. But we just don't know. That's yeah, awesome, man. All right. Break time. Break time. Break time. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, second half of the show with Luke Caverns, discussing, trying to discuss the Olmecs, <laughs> getting sidetracked, but it's a, it's all fascinating material, all of this stuff. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's always great getting you in, especially cause you can just come down here and be in the studio, you know, like, uh, yeah, some of the, the best interviews are done in person. I think you can really tell the difference. So not like the guy who does the giants episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's on yeah. Zoom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and I, I agree. And honestly, I, we, I mean, I know we have, we have like good chemistry, but um, these are like the most comfortable, most fun in-person podcasts that I, that I've ever done. Oh, uh, awesome! And I, and I think it's because you know we all have a similar uh, knowledge about things. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and and we're able to really go back and forth. Sometimes when you go on a podcast, it's like the person you're talking to has doesn't know anything about what you're talking about and it's you yeah you know carrying it along so it's awesome to sit with you guys and you know you'll say something and uh you'll say something and he'll go whoa <laughs> i go i go i go i have no idea what you're talking about please tell me you know <laughs> yeah so it's it's cool so you okay. have a mind blown button right there it says yeah. boom <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's me that's me the whole podcast <laughs> So, anyways, all right. So we're we're going on to when you sh when you pull up to the um, when you get to Mexico City, and it takes you forty five minutes to go one mile because the traffic is so bad. You see this giant rock, just uh, this giant basalt, or maybe I think I think it is basalt, towering above. Uh, the palm trees in front of the uh, National Museum of Anthropology. You come around the palm trees, and there is this gigantic <laughs> statue Jesus sitting in Christ. sitting in front of the museum, and you can see the palm trees behind it. Now it is sitting in front of the palm trees a, a little bit, but it's not sitting in front of the palm trees so much that it looks disproportionately gigantic. Yeah. Now on top of that, this was also placed on top of the pyramid of the sun at teotihuacan it was sitting on top of that and the pyramid of the sun is the biggest i think it is i think it is maybe the tallest pyramid in all of mexico if if not it's the second tallest and you can see the holes in the center of it there were obsidian mirrors that were placed in those holes and so when the sun was setting and oh, rising man. when it was in the sky, it would it would reflect off of those mirrors, and so down the people at the bottom see this gigantic fire god statue on top of the pyramid of the sun, and it's reflecting light down on them. I wonder if he had obsidian in his eyes as well. The probably. eyes are gone. Pre he probably did. I mean, they're, they're, that's crazy. We just don't know. We just don't know. But absolutely colossal. That that's excellent. You put that on top of a pyramid. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and it's one of those, it's one of those things about ancient Mexico. You start, I mean, most people, the vast majority of people have never seen this before. And I only saw this last year. I didn't even know that this, that this existed, let alone that it was standing on top of the pyramid of the sun at Teotihuacan. So, 
It's um, the Great Pyramid of Cholula is the tallest in Mexico and also good hot sauce, according to <laughs> the Watcher. Great Pyramid of Cholula. Yeah, Cholula, the giant, the massive one with the cathedral on top of it. I didn't know that it was the tallest though. I thought that it was the biggest by mass, but mm. I could I could be wrong because, you know, you have the pyramid of uh, I mean you have you have the pyramid of La Danta and El Tigre at El Mirador, which are very very tall as well. Um, and it's hard to judge the Don't doubt the time. watcher. <laughs> so I don't know, but he, he could be right though. Um, I, I had thought that Cholula was the biggest as far as being the widest pyramid with the most mass. Yeah. I didn't know that it was the tallest one. Um, but even so, the, the, the pyramid of the sun at Teotihuacan is just colossal. I mean, it looks like a mountain. I actually have my friend uh, text me this morning and he sent me a photo of the, you know, they do hot air balloons over the, over the pyramids at Teotihuacan. He sends this to me and he goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, this thing looks like it's as big as Enchanted Rock. And I was like, I was like, yeah, that's a fair assessment. Mm, what? And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's probably like roughly the height. I've been to Enchanted Rock maybe four or five times. The height of Enchanted Rock. It's probably like roughly the height of Enchanted Rock. Yeah. And I actually looked, I actually looked it up. It's, he says Cholula is two, 217 and the Pyramid of the Sun is 216. Oh, uh, okay. I'm assuming that's. Cool. Feet? Feet. Feet, probably. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Enchanted Rock is 240. I, I looked it up this morning. I think it's 240 feet tall from its base, something like that. Um, so it's a little bit taller. But I was telling him, I was like, I was like, yeah, it's it, they're roughly similar size. And he goes, he goes, so is this carved out of like a pre-existing mountain or a hill? And I was like, no, man, it's brick <laughs> by brick. And he goes, he goes, no way that this is. It's all made from bricks. Like the entire thing, it was flat ground. I said it was flat ground that was built on top of like a cenote, not a cenote, but a cave that goes straight into the ground. The pyramid of the sun is built on top of that. It was flat ground. So it's brick by brick by brick by brick, just colossal pyramid. And um, so anyways, this was placed on top of that pyramid. And and most people just would have no idea. And, and when they- Is there an estimate on how much that thing weighs? You know, I've tried to find an estimate, but it's just not one of those things that's I mean, like they, readily available. Somebody moved it there to the museum, right? So that's what I was about to get into. So when they're moving it from Teotihuacan down to downtown Mexico City, they have these gigantic trucks. And you could probably look up photos of this. It crushed all of the trucks that, <laughs> that they that they used to, to transport it. They they had to they had to constantly they would move it from one truck to the other, and it would pop the eighteen wheeler tires and crush the entire bed that it was sitting on. And then they'd have to like roll it onto another <laughs> onto another truck and transport it a certain. And they could only drive it eleven miles an hour yeah. at, at most. I don't understand why and that was in the fifties, I believe. So. I'm sorry, keep going. What is the mindset behind moving this thing away from where it's supposed to be? I just don't understand that. Like, leave it there. Stand it up. Clean I it. I know. You I... know, build a nice little shrine, like a place <laughs> where people can walk around it and stuff. But why take it away? I don't know. That's just, that's not, I neither no here idea. nor there, but. I have no idea. And it's not like they can, it's not like they can argue like, oh, we're doing it to, to protect it. Keeping it, it safe, bro. It. Yeah. <laughs> keeping it safe. Put it in the middle of keeping this pool. It like, like, does anything need to keep that thing safe? Like, like, you'd have to drop a bomb on it. <laughs> yeah, we are, we're going to take it over here and put it outside <laughs> to keep it safe. Yeah. We're going to take it to downtown Mexico City and put it in the middle of the town. I, yeah, I just don't understand it, you know. Uh, it's, uh, we are greater than Who them, is that, that supposed mindset. to be? It's it's the fire god. Uh, I'm gonna say Huitzilopochtli, but that is probably wrong. But it could be right. But it is it is the fire god of, of the Aztecs. Look at those nub hands. Again, I'm not an Aztec expert. That's a whole different. Yeah, type. they do look like nubs. Where at? His the, his his arms oh, or yeah, hands yeah, are yeah. like these giant, giant nubs. nubs. Yeah. Yeah, and I wonder if he had something on the end of them, you know, or something that that filled in that little cavity that's yeah. around that little nub arm that he's got. I. That's so just cool. Don't though. know, man. But it was such awesome art. I just love the style. It's so good. Uh, the yeah, their their style is just uh, absolutely incredible. You could so. make platform games out of their art all day. <laughs> so here's me. Here's me in a Maya. Uh, shamanic state <laughs> so, um, look at those ghosts back there so here's one that I thought you guys oh. would find interesting now what does that look like to you this it's, looks like the statue of the head being ripped it's, apart well, well that but 
I, and there's no, I don't think, yeah, I don't, there wasn't a label in front of it or anything, but myself and some of the other people that were there um, thought that thought that this is showing something in the middle of its carving okay. and it's, it's showing okay. something not being done or some, something that's unfinished, I guess. Okay. Yeah, but except it, that except that the unfinished part is finished. Yeah, and oh, that's that's true. That's true. But I, you know, I I don't know. This is why I'm showing it to you guys. And well, okay, yeah. So Kyle's right. The unfinished part has been polished, but also the finished part is really finished. Mm-hmm. Right. So it looks like they intentionally wanted it to look this way. Yeah, this looks like more it's, art. To it's me. purposeful. Yeah. What do you guys take that as meaning? I it, it I don't know. It's like the face emerging from the stone again. Mm-hmm. It also looks female. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. It could be hair. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you, know, you, know something, really. you know something I always think is, uh, I, I find this funny. Uh, Dr. Barnhart said this. We were all standing around this looking at it. We we're all trying to figure out what it means. And he goes, he goes, you know, sometimes I always wonder, like, we're sitting here looking for a deep meaning of it. And what if the reality of this is that you know, this is somebody who's who's trying to become a stonemason and trying to you know, <laughs> carve things, and he brings this to his friends, and they're like, "No, nah, man, no, bro, <laughs> no, man, you need to find something else." And so, and so well, he they bar- were wrong. So he buries it in his backyard, ashamed, and archaeologists unearth it. Yeah. Like, wow, like, oh, what is a good this? purpose? Oh, this is great. This is like a fail object. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I really like it as a piece of art, though. Yeah. I think it's. Uh, I don't know, like he's saying the face emerging from the stone or like we were talking about before, like the going across the veil, mm-hmm. you know, you remember the, peeking on the other side of the veil. Well, there's the quote. It reminds me of the quote from Michelangelo. Mm. I see the angel in the marble and I carve until I set him free. Mm. That's what that looks like. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. So, okay, so this museum... Uh, this is at Jalapa as well. Very nice museum. Oh my gosh, you guys would be, uh, you guys would be a kid in a candy shop here. The monolith of Tlaloc uh, is that statue in front of the palms. Tlaloc, Tlaloc, uh, Tlaloc is a um, Tlaloc is a um, Teotihuacan um, rain god, I think. That's what he says. Um, yeah, ancient <clears throat> deity of rain and water. Oh, okay, okay. There is some debate as to whether the statue is not possibly the sister or wife. Which has a name that I will not try to pronounce. Tlaloc. Chao Kui Tuku. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. That interesting. was way better. Because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's funny. Um, the monolith of Tlaloc. Interesting. It's interesting that it says that. Um, cause when we were there, the archeologists seemed to think that, that, uh, that it was the fire God, but, but they did place it in a pool of water. <clears throat> they did place so, it in I a pool know. of water. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know, and another thing is like how it much seems like no one knows. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's really, <laughs> yeah. that's really, you know, yeah. Like it, like in these things, it's not as easy to f- figure out it as it is in some other places. Like in, in Greece, it's obvious to know who this God is, you know, it just, um, but in, in the Mesoamerican world, we're, we are cut off. Well, they literally burned all of the history, you know, mm-hmm. uh, just p- pyres, multiple pyres. I mean, the Aztecs were making 485,000 pieces of paper a year when the Spanish arrived. Don't and, tell me this part. <laughs> and, 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 and they had been doing this, not the Aztecs, but Mesoamericans had been doing this for almost 2,000 years. And the Spaniards burned all of it. All of it. So, we're looking back on these things, just speculating. Yeah, just clueless. Yeah. And yeah. there were and there were no there were no orders taking things down. I mean, I, there were some, but just not enough, you know. And and so, a lot of what we have are a this lot is of the most infuriating story of history, that, as far as I'm concerned. Oh wow! I mean, yeah, it's it's like the it's like discovering a colony books. on Mars and then burning all of their history. Yeah. You know, I just uh... and uh, basically. The way that we, the way that we have any kind of context is as to what these people believed or what their culture was like. There were some of them that communicated with Spaniards about their daily lives and what they did, but typically, it was tribes that wanted to see the Aztecs fall. 
that were talking with Spaniards and telling them about the Aztecs. So it's not the Aztecs speaking to us through the Spaniards. It's the Aztecs neighbors speaking about the Aztecs. So how, you know, that's not at all a clear view as to what these people were really like. And so that's really all that we have is people that were living on the peripherals of these main civilizations. Cause what was happening there was disease and pestilence destroying, you know, more than 90% of all these populations. And you have the people on the peripherals who survived that obviously didn't want to be associated with them telling our literary sources about them, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's just, a, it's, it's not a clear view as to what these people were really like. Here is that tenon head. That's that's mm. the Olmec tenon head. So look at it compared to um, that lady's body. Uh, just wow. <laughs> I mean, just huge, dude. Like, Where, where's the face? Is it is it on the top there? It's looking up. Yeah, I yeah, see an yeah. eye. So, okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah. that is that is an eye. Um, <laughs> it uh, right here. it's uh, it's just bizarre monuments. I I. You look at this, I have no idea what it what it's depicting. I just don't know. Are those his like the ears with the crazy um like the, the you know, they put all this stuff in their ears like the the mask of what's his name has the has the big pins coming out of his ears with the big plates yeah, on it. Yeah, is yeah, that yeah. possibly what that is is like his whole possibly possibly ear we, ring situation? We just don't know. And so, and so that tenon on the back would have been slid into the side of an earthen pyramid. And there he is with his arms going back, his elbows tucked in, and his hands are hands, crossing his yeah. chest. Oh, and this right here, this, this fist thing pointing together is such a common image in, in Mesoamerica. Uh, and Dr. Barnhart and I talked about it all the time. This right here is seen everywhere. And we were, we were constantly talking It's almost talking like about, fetal. You know, like a, a a a newborn baby coming out, like could be. This is the way there could could be. It's depicted. It's depicted all over the place, like this. Could it, it be some kind of salute, like a? Could oh, be. that's cool. Could yeah. be. Yeah, I. I mean, obviously, we. Yeah, we infant know. salute. Uh, the way the way that I described it, the way it looked like, is like you know when you're trying to force those horseshoe magnets to touch oh, yeah. each other. Yeah. That's what it looked like. It, it looked. We'll we'll see them uh, throughout this presentation, but there there's lots of examples of this. So. This right here is the statue of poop. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess. It's a coprolite. <laughs> this thing is huge. Man. I was like, uh, we walked up to that, and Dr. Barnard goes, "Wow, it's the world's first poop emoji." <laughs> I have no idea what this that, is. That big stone snake left that behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, who knows? Maybe this. I mean, this could have been something as because there are um, there are stone statues that look exactly like snakes coiled up and who knows mm -hmm, this could yeah. be this could be somebody trying to learn how to do that yeah. you know um here's another tendon head this one's very eroded um oh yeah yeah so this one is probably i don't know maybe maybe three or four feet long about this big with a mo you know a modestly sized human head on the end but he's got the arms just like this and again these would have been slid into the sides of earthen mounds now the thing about earthen mounds it is i mean i'm i'm telling you that that pose and the fact that they're like coming out of the mm -hmm. mound or the wall is like a birth yeah that's what it's making me think very of. very interesting yeah it does look like a birth pose yeah the head back yeah and like the, mm -hmm. the arms like tucked in like this it's just so they're like they're coming out yeah of the, yeah of the temple. head first coming out now, now that's interesting Being because from the temple. Yeah. That's interesting because here it's so eroded that we can't tell if it is a if it is a, has the jaguar fangs because in the altars the oracle emerges with the child and the child is shown to have fangs. It mm -hmm. is it is a it is an infant, you know, it's an infant with the face of a, with the face and the mouth and the nose of a jaguar. And so, if that is what this is depicting, where they're being birthed out in a fetal position, I'd love to see something like this with a better preserved. I love the mouth. idea of of being birthed out of the temple itself. Mm -hmm. You know what that sounds like is a um, a depiction of a the most famous part of a myth that we just don't have anymore. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of yeah. Course. Right. Yeah. Like the the this 
birthing but, of the jaguar child or something like but that. But think of it. It's like the, a story that they all knew. So this is the most famous imagery and, of and it. And a strange aspect of that, though, is the Olmec heads are not jaguar people. Yeah. It's two different classes of people. You have the were jaguar and you have the Olmec heads. The Olmec heads are have nothing to do hmm. with this jaguar with where jaguar iconography so it's like you have the shamans and you have the kings and it's oh it's almost like they're equals you know it's just how do you reconcile that in a society it's just a it's something that's completely lost to us yeah well, um, you, th- you were I, yeah something. i was just thinking going on this whole birth idea but the temple being being uh synonymous with the body or the womb right mm-hmm. like there's a you know, in the in the Christian tradition, it's like the body is the temple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. I just like that idea that it's also. I mean, I don't know. I think that's a powerful symbol. Well, the temple and- being the body, but also um, culture being born out of, um, like, you know, these like this or civilization being born out of a culture. Mm-hmm. And the temple is like represents sort of the womb of that culture. Yeah, because it's the it's the beginning to recognize the patterns in the world that results in some kind of religious yeah. perspective, and then that births the the civilization. Yeah. Well, and and in Mesoamerica, the whole point of the <clears throat> the whole point of a um, of a pyramid is to replicate a mountain, you know, and mm-hmm. then they believe that just like in the Greek world, that their gods come down from the mountains. You know, and that's kind of, mm. the the mountain is like the core central part of their religion. It may also be a volcano as well. See, now, really you, know? now you, might, you make me want to go full Sitchin. Oh, really? The aliens are landing on the pyramids. And, oh, <laughs> I mean, <wow>. come on, <laughs> bro. Well, <laughs> yeah. You got that, jo- I mean, I'm looking at that, that massive statue. On top of it. And I, it's like this yep. giant on top, and you're like, yeah, yeah, they put it up on top. And I'm like, of course they did. Yeah. Because yeah. that's where the guys came down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> that's I cool. I don't, I, I don't know, you know, and, and why. What are these stories telling us? Yeah, And, and why is it the same thing on Mount Olympus yeah. or Mount Olympia or whatever? Um, well, you know, why is it the same thing? Yeah, and why in Mesoamerica? I mean, this isn't and the Olmecs. Moses. But... Oh, you're yeah. right. Yeah, you're I right. mean, come on, like you speaking to the the God that descends onto the mountaintop. This yep. is a this is a classic, all throughout all kinds of cultures. It's the same imagery. You go up the mountain to speak to the gods mm-hmm. or to God. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. so I, if you live in a place with no mountains, you build one. So the God will come down and talk to you. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. And uh, uh, the watchers pointing out Teotihuacan means where men, the gods, uh, the where men are men become gods. Men become yeah, gods. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. They think they think that that's roughly the meaning. Uh, the hard part about Teotihuacan as well that I should say is that Teotihuacan is I mean right there just maybe an hour drive away from Tenochtitlan. Now, now, Teotihuacan is 500 BC to 500 AD, or about 400 AD. If it's an hour away, is it like a mile and a quarter? <laughs> or is it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's probably that's a good point. Probably not that far. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, let's just let's call it like let's call it like a like a Texas 30 minute drive. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's that far away. Now, Teotihuacan is not built by the Aztecs, even though it's right next to the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan. It's about a thousand years or 800 years before the Aztecs ever come down. The Aztecs probably lived somewhere in the American Southwest and they migrated down to Mexico City. So they are not Mesoamerican. They are a more like Chaco Canyon. I've heard that the, that they, and they have this, uh, they're the ones with the myth of their previous homeland, Aztlan. right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, um, as to land, yeah, uh, how crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, how crazy. Just, <laughs> so, I don't, I'm, I'm a little bit dyslexic, so I mean, I'm just thinking Atlantis, yeah, of uh, course, yeah. 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 Atlantis or Atlas. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Atlatl, all of these words with that, yeah, uh, yep, it's yeah. it's very interesting. So, so they would have come down from somewhere in the American Southwest and they they discovered the ruins of Teotihuacan. But the ruins of Teotihuacan were, had already been abandoned for about 800 years. So, the that big temple, uh, uh, 
pyramid of the sun that that giant statue was on top of, it, it already looked like a giant mountain. Just a mountain. Yeah. yeah. And um, so... And was the statue still up there? Or would it, had it fallen? I don't know. Mm. Somebody I, pushed it down. Can you yeah, imagine? Yeah. You're just walking through the desert and there's this hill with this thing on top. Like, Could you imagine? I mean, how... <laughs> I just... You know, th- that's one of the things I think about all the time is like, uh, there are so many instances like that that I would have loved to to be a fly on the wall yeah. or a fly on the rock and see it. And like, like think about think about Herodotus going through Egypt in 450 BC, you know? Yeah, I know. When these uh, places are just sitting covered, covered by sand and he's yeah. like peeking through the labyrinths just fully open to him there's no one out there but squatters you know living amongst the temples and he's able to go through and explore these things yeah well the labyrinth he said was occupied he had to have a guide so there were there were like squatters like living there. And well, he no, he has, it was still occupied by priests and stuff. Oh, but there are okay, other okay. places that were like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't talk about anywhere in particular. I yeah. just mean like the you labyrinth, know. though specifically. Yeah, he was guided, and then they wouldn't let him go to the floor below because of the crocodile kings were buried down there. He said, "No way." Yeah, it's <laughs> <sighs> crazy. But wouldn't you, man? Yeah. What would you give to yeah. to accompany him on that journey? You yeah. Know? And the Spaniards going through the Americas and just seeing all these ancient wonders from, I mean, just imagine crossing the ocean and you have discovered another half of the planet that has giant pyramids, just like the ones you've always grown up hearing about in Egypt. Yeah. And the further you go, the more there is and the more there is and the more there is. And they also have, giant statues of snakes of which you've seen snakes where you came from yeah you've seen some of these animals but some of the animals are totally brand new to you it's just like man imagine stepping into this world and how infatuating it must have been and and maybe we've talked about it here before but the exploration of the americas was actually so infatuating that when a lot of these explorers reached the end of their careers they committed suicide because it was it was that amazing they just imagine the high of, of, of exploring a new world yeah and then it's over you know, you're not going to be an explorer anymore. There was nothing that could fulfill them, you mm-hmm. know, any more than what they had experienced. And, and so then within a few hundred years, it was covered in jungle and lost? After the first explorers? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, tons of what they saw. Uh, manuscript 512. Yep. yep. The worm oh, y'all know about manuscript oh, yeah. 512. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. We did shows on it. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah, I need to go watch that then because I'm, I'm uh, studying this right now for – something I'm doing next week. Um, Yeah, I mean, it talks about a full-on city. Now, the Portuguese explorers are likening these statues to that of Greco-Roman stuff that they've seen, but that's that's because they just arrived in South America, and all they know is ancient Greco-Roman world, because that's all that there is. I mean, in the 1500s, Egyptology hadn't even started, you know? So a lot of these guys just know about Greece and Rome. And so they're going through this and they see these... They see these big temple facades and who knows, man? Maybe they even see... um, Maybe they even see... um, geometric patterns that are similar to ancient Greece, just like you see in the Maya world. That spiral uh, meandering pattern Mm -hmm. is all over the Maya world and it's also all over the Greek and Roman world as well. And so, you know, maybe they they find the city and he even says it's got these wide open plazas with archways. In the Maya world, there are wide open plazas with archways, big giant stone cities. Anyways, you they, said it looked like it had been destroyed by some kind of cataclysm. There were oh, massive cracks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And, and who knows? I mean, there could be earthquakes, I don't know, but Yeah. Yes, they find they found a lot of cities. Um, um, Francisco de Oriana he saw tall walled cities with millions of natives protecting it and firing arrows. This at is him. the guy that was going down the river. Yeah, 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 and and firing arrows at him and and relentlessly attacking him during his whole expedition. But we've never seen that since then. You know, it's crazy. Man. Just, I mean, like, um, why did he give them all smallpox or something? That's the thing. Is like the idea that his expedition spread disease. His to all expedition those people. spread disease through 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 the Amazon, and then, you know, by the time the explorers like Percy Fawcett come around, those cities have been gone for four hundred years. Yeah, at this Burton point as well. Sir Francis yep. Burton was yep. out there. Yeah, and, and so so those cities have been gone for three or four five hundred years. Yeah, four hundred years, and. Um, 
And but you got to think the tribes that are a thousand miles in the other or a hundred miles in the other direction, um, they have heard echoes of these great cities. And so they're telling him, yeah, yeah, there's there's a legend of a city. If you just keep going further that way, you mm-hmm. know, but it's this legends that have been around for probably thousands of years and generations. And they're yeah. pointing him towards it. And he's looking for a city that he's looking for a city that he doesn't realize he thinks it is currently existing, but it's probably gone. You know, I mean, it's probably buried by the jungle at this point. And so the jungle is so dense that even if he was walking on the city, he may not even know he's there. You know, I mean, and the jungle is the Amazon jungle is, is, is. Yeah. He was, he was probably hoping to find some kind of, he's, Spent a lot of time in the jungle, so... Oh, yeah. 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 And he was probably hoping to find some... So like, you come out like, well, there's a stone statue wrapped in vines, right? It's yep. tilted over or something like that. Because he did find... I guess he did find pottery and stuff, right? Lots of pottery. Yeah. Um, he found he found uh, stone idols made from basalt. Yeah. Which we aren't familiar with basalt quarries in the Amazon. Yeah. But I'm sure that they exist. Um I mean, the Amazon is is the size of the United States, you know. So there's definitely yeah. there's definitely basalt and granite quarry somewhere in there. But the thing is with the Amazon is so from y'all's point of view, this western side is all clay bedrock. So that you know you dig down, dig down, it's just clay, and you have to go down like a hundred feet before you hit solid bedrock. On the eastern side, you start hitting granite and limestone, and so he was kind of in the southern. Um, he was kind of in the southern central part of the Amazon in the Mato Grosso region, which means thick forest. And it was a, it was an uncharted area that only the expedition of Theodore Roosevelt had gone to uh, prior to him. Of course, Theodore Roosevelt almost died when he was there. Um, and I think they called it like the the river that he was on, the, the Zingu River or something along that along those lines. They called it the, the, the River of Evil, I believe. And it just very formidable place to be with extremely violent natives but that's where he was at i mean to this day we st- we we have no idea where most likely a city would be but if he's looking for a portuguese city looking back 100 years with more foresight or hindsight um probably a little bit more northeast of him where we know that more limestone and granite bedrock is at. If you were to go along tributaries there and look for waterfalls where fresh water is plummeting into a river, probably more likely to find something there. But it's like those, you know, that's the most, that's the remote Amazon. So yeah. yeah. Well, we're at another break, and I don't think we've we've gone. <laughs> we haven't made any progress on this. <laughs> on, on, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, no, it's great. I, I mean, dude. Uh, you're gonna give this presentation the actual presentation, not all this, uh, all these tangents, <laughs> at the Cosmic Summit. I'm actually right? giving a different presentation. He's not, are you really? Yeah, he's yeah, not yeah, giving yeah. this one. Yeah. Oh. It's called, it, the, the presentation I'm giving is called Mysterious Mesoamerica. So it's it is all of Mesoamerica. Okay. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna do it in, <laughs> in 45 minutes or an hour or whatever I have. Okay. Well. Uh. Yeah. We'll just we. We've got to get through this thing, yeah, and it's not going to happen today. Okay, I, I, yeah, it's yeah. not going to happen today. I, you know, I don't mind coming back in a couple months. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We should we should keep going because this is. I mean, we saw this thing in a in a one hour presentation mm-hmm. at yeah. the eclipse event, yeah. and it's you had no yeah. no interrupters and hecklers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. this is great. I, yeah. I love it all. So yeah, we'll we'll get back to it in just after these uh, brief messages from our sponsors. Good night, Chuck. back ladies and gentlemen for the final segment i think yeah <laughs> of the uh i guess what is now going to be the first part <laughs> clearly the, it's going to be part one part one <laughs> of the enigma of the olmecs yes <laughs> but i'm actually really looking forward to i like all the tangents we're gonna we're gonna just we're gonna deep dive on all this stuff and and 
you know, Luke has uh, agreed. He promised. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to finish the presentation, so we'll make it a multi-part series, which yeah. I think is great. I would love that because we we're, we're uh, we've always been fascinated by it, and you really have uh, a lot of uh, great knowledge on the subject. So we uh, yeah, again, stuff appreciate it. Not found anywhere else. So yeah. it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, and it's it's um, like I was saying, it's um, interesting that there's so much to talk about with a culture that we know so little about, mm -hmm. and there's so many things to discuss. So, with the presentation, we're getting into the, I kind of skip forward, the, you know, the beginning of it is establishing what we know, but you've kind of already seen, um, you've kind of already seen, I'll tell you what, I'll, we'll, do the, we'll do the colossal heads real quick. Yeah, yeah. So, there's 17 known colossal heads, likely more to be discovered. Uh, unique portraits, they are unique portraits of, of Olmec rulers, although almost certainly not all rulers had colossal heads commissioned. Size of the head may indicate the power and economic prosperity. Okay, can I ask questions? Sure. How do they know they are portraits of rulers? <clears throat> Is it a guess? It's, I mean, yeah, it's okay. a guess. All right. It's a guess, yeah. And I would like to point something out. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, sure. Or, uh, this is to Russ. Look at the erosion lines on top of the head on the top right. I see that. Does that remind you of anything? The devil's arrows? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to hold it down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the devil's arrows. I mean, it was, which was, you remember the erosion lines yeah. on top of those megaliths? It does look okay. like that. So anyway, keep yeah. going. Okay. It also looks like the, 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 what you see in the Egyptian temples all along the walls. Oh, yeah, the scoops yeah. they take out and mm. make tea out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drink the god. Yeah. So so they measure between uh, 410 and 12 feet tall and weigh between 6 and 40 tons. And I can move that 40 tons up to about 42 tons for the Lacabata head. Found at all three major Olmec sites, San Lorenzo, La Venta, and Tres Sapotes. And many have markings on their heads as though they were intentionally damaged, although also theorized that it is accidental damage during carving. But... Uh, Dr. Barnhart doesn't think that that's he doesn't think that that that's the case. He thinks that if it was accidentally damaged, they would just shave it down a little bit more and fix it. So the those, yeah, those markings at the top right, that's a whole it's a mystery as as to what happens. That's not his due. No, no, it's not. No, no. <laughs> no, and so they were transported uh, 80 plus kilometers from the basalt quarries in the Tushla Mountains. So uh, I have a map of that. So this is the largest head, La Cobata, 12 feet tall, 40 tons, actually about 42 tons. And uh, and he's the only Olmec head that is actually still sleeping, so they say. Because um, mm, usually the pupils are... the pupils are carved a little bit. They, you know, There's enough left that you can see the pupils, but with him you can't see it. So... Um, I have no idea what a sleeping Olmec head is supposed to indicate, but they say that he's the he's the only that sleeping a one. Dude with a wide face too. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. And they all look kind of they kind of look uh, I don't know, not angry but stoic. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of yeah. intimidatingly sure. serious. Sure. There, yeah. Well, there, there's a couple of them that are actually smiling. Um, I've seen yeah one or two that look like they're smiling, but yeah. most of them are just like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Um, so. Okay, so now we get to that we've seen all this stuff. Here we get to the enigmas, and there's a lot of strange things to do with the Olmecs. This is one of my favorites. This is the lost sarcophagus uh, discovered. I say sarcophagus, but there actually wasn't a body inside of it. Uh, discovered by Matthew Sterling in 1939. Low, low relief depictions uh, of a reptilian dragon body along the sides, reptilian jaguar face at the front, uh, filled with jade offerings, red clay, and cinnabar, mm -hmm. but no body. Made of, stand made of sandstone that instantly disintegrated. So we talked about this earlier, but it was made of sandstone and the pressure that they had to pull on it to pull it out of the to pull it out of the ground or pull it out of where it was buried was so much pressure that it caused it to crumble in their hands and it's gone today. It doesn't exist. The only thing that exists is this illustration. So here, though, we have a stone depiction of the same sarcophagi or box. And in person, you can tell that the, that the carvings that are on this little reptilian face are also at the top of that statue. And that statue is probably about 10 feet tall. Um, and that's, that's found at La Venta. So it's one of the indications that this is, these were probably sarcophagi. But we haven't found a sarcophagi with a body in it. And the only sarcophagi we did find was actually filled with artifacts and cinnabar and clay rather than an actual body. So it's... What kind of artifacts? 
uh jade like jade okay. offerings yeah um jade figurines jade jewelry you know jade rings that that kind of stuff um little obsidian and and iron ore mirrors um and all covered with red cinnabar but nobody inside of it or iron ore mirrors and cinnabar which is the you know. so yeah yeah well i mean so when i say they didn't have metallurgy that's the only thing that that we know that they had they had iron ore mirrors other than that no metal. so not smelted iron but iron ore mm-hmm that they made mirrors out of, and then cinnabar, which you can you can extract mercury from. Yes. So that's interesting, huh? What What are you thinking? I just, I mean, why are I, they I, collecting all this yeah. <laughs> random metal ores? Yeah. and not making, not smelting metals, not doing. Yeah. Why would they? I mean, how did they know it was? I mean, you know, it seems like well, you're collecting it because you think it's special. Why but do they if you think can't it was get special? the iron out of it or the or the mercury out of it? How do you know it's special? I yeah, it's uh, this is an interesting question. Hmm. So speaking of collecting, I'm gonna pull this up real quick. Um, I believe I sent it over to my and then computer. I I also would want to say that that statue with the guy in the box, he doesn't look like a dead guy. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> so look like a dead guy. maybe he's if that's actually showing something else. You know? Yeah, yeah. I I, I agree. Was a, I agree with you. Maybe, but I, yeah. I wouldn't know what it what right. It is. I mean, like I don't know, <clears throat> meditation so, box, some kind of rebirth ritual. So this right here, when we talk Ooh. about why are they collecting things? All right. I figure we just go ahead and just jump to meteorite. this. Yeah. This is this is the biggest mystery in the Olmec world, I think. Well, one of. There's a lot of cool stuff, but when we talk about collecting things at San Lorenzo. The oldest date that we have at San Lorenzo is anywhere between 2200 and 1800 BC at a site called the Red Palace. And it was an earthen palace, gigantic earthen palace, um, covered with red cinnabar. And what? right next to right next to the palace is a pit filled and and what's in here is not found anywhere else in the Olmec world. Not a little bit of it here, not a little bit of it there, only here. It is a pit filled with six tons of these cubes right here, and they're magnetite cubes. What? And so... What? (laughs) Yes. Six tons of magnetite cubes next to the first palace in the Mesoamerican world. Six tons buried next to it. Also at the city where all of the Olmec heads were discovered. So, um, I have a photo. And these, I mean, you can, that's being held in a hand. They're yeah. small. Yes, I have a photo. Like half the Do you think this is carved or is this the natural state of this no, chunk no, no, of No, no, no. These, these are carved. They're definitely. carved. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, for have you seen Super 8? Super 8, yeah. <laughs> Those are parts of a spaceship. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to show you guys this if I can. If I can find it. Um, that is wild. Magnetite. Well, <clears throat> I know a guy who, uh, well, they, there are a lot of mines down in South America that uh, mine magnetite. Yeah. There is a, there's an Olmec head that is. But at, I don't know a guy. <laughs> you don't know a guy? No. Nah. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, man. It, it's tough to find these things on the internet. Oh, pff, there we go. Um, so this... Should I send it over to my computer? Oh, I mean, I can look it up. Yeah, yeah. So, well, it's, it's tough because it's going to take a second to find, but I can show it to the camera. So look on his helmet. What okay, the, I see okay, the helmet. He's yeah. got dimples on the helmet. Those, but tell me those don't look like the magnetite cubes. They though. do. So you can see it right here. Yeah. So you're suggesting this might be uh, armor parts. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Either armor parts or or crazy, you know, out there idea is that they may have been used to somehow magnets are used to displace the weight mm-hmm. of the heads. We we had people on our on our um, their archaeologist on the expedition that were on our, on our excursion that were theorizing that possibly somehow these magnetic nets were used to displace the weight of the Olmec heads to push them along easier. Maybe not by much. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, how, how wild is that? So, I have seen, and I don't know if this is... So, yeah, it, 
Yeah, so it's got to be um, do do Olmec head San Lorenzo, and you'll eventually you'll eventually find it. Um, I've seen stuff from people showing things from South America claiming that the stone is magnetic. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I don't know how legit that is, but I have seen. I think Brian Forrester's pointed this out, and some other people like that. Some stones have magnetic properties. So there's a bunch of different Olmec heads, so it's gonna be tough. To find, find him it. right there to the right, second to the right. There, there he is. That's him. <clears throat> so very, like clearly, those have to be. They're not. They're not jade beads because they're more square than they are circular. Um, the Olmecs do depict something that looks like this, similar, which are jade beads. It's just, it's, but it's circular with a hole in the middle. But these are more square, which look exactly like these magnetite cubes. Buried in one cache of six tons. So what are they doing with six tons of magnetite cubes? Right next to the Red Palace. These aren't, you know, some people thought that they were like, uh, that they could have been used for nets for fishing, but we'd see them all over the rivers. Yeah. But we, we don't find them in the rivers. So you would that see... That sounds like, to me, that sounds like they found it. Like they found... Yeah. 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 It could be. Yeah. It could be, and nobody knows. Right. So it's, uh, that, that's one of, that, I think this is one of the biggest mysteries that really, really nobody knows about. This is going to come out in a big lecture series in a book at some point in the next, not, not me, but mm. um, it's going to come, this is, this is going to come out. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very cool. There, there's research on this right now. Um but they, yeah, they just don't know exactly what these would have been, what these would have been used for. But it, I, I would like to know how, you know, what are they drilling holes through it, right? Mm -hmm. With what? <laughs> Flint? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, when you when you read these descriptions at the sites, you don't you're not getting much. You know, right. it's just yeah. magnetite cubes discovered by the Red Palace in cache of six tons, San Lorenzo, discovered in 1939. You know, nothing more than that. Yeah. You look it up in textbooks, nothing more than that. You know, I mean, if you if you look up a Mesoamerican textbook, the Maya section is about this long and the Olmec section is about that yeah. long. Yeah. You know, they, we just don't know anything about them. Like, we are completely separated from these people. And that makes me think that it's possible, and I, I'm sure I'm not the only person that has said this, but maybe I've actually read it other places, but it's possible that, that a lot of art artifacts that are completely disconnected and unknown just get thrown into the Olmec pool. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because it's just like there, there's not enough information to yeah. separate. Like the clearest thing we have are these heads, mm -hmm. you know. But the heads aren't – the heads don't have long heads. Sure. And then we have these little figurines with long heads. Well, why do we assume these are the same people? Because they were found exactly. near the heads. Exactly. And you have a bunch of magnetite cubes with holes drilled through them. Are they associated with the Olmecs because one Olmec head has a, a helmet made of – squares with mm -hmm. circle you know i mean it's just i think that it's possible we're looking at a mm -hmm. lot of different out of place artifacts uh, sets. yeah yeah in multiple different cultures yeah, yeah i totally explorers totally that came there thousands of years ago and mm -hmm. left things you know who knows yeah, yeah cultures that just completely didn't survive yeah like who built and I, I know this is a bit of a tangent but like who built teotihuacan they're just they're just gone they're completely they are gone. completely gone the aztecs like you said showed up and found the place Mm -hmm. Right, but whoever built that city, obviously they were powerful. They had a lot of Extremely people. Powerful. They had yeah, and they're just there. There's nothing left of them in history except for those that that place. So I think that's that it could be the same all throughout the, you know, Mexico, Central and South America, and the Americas as well. That there were multiple cultures that achieved amazing things and just for some reason or another vanished without a trace in the historical record. Yeah. And then yeah. like and the Olmex is just like this is a name that we give to a whole group of artifacts that we don't understand. Yep. That may not be necessarily the same people. Hey, you're exactly right. Okay. I mean yeah, yeah, you are exactly right. There's we had I had conversations with with Dr. Barnhart about this. I'm like, you know, you see some you see some differences and things. Like could this be multiple different Olmec cultures? And he's like he's like, well, the important thing to remember is that we made up. I mean, the, we just give them the name Olmec. There's nothing to suggest that all of these different towns. I mean, because you look at an Olmec map, it's like you have all these different <laughs> sites and only a few of them have heads. 
but there's some similar artifacts, you know, but really it's probably just different cultures and different cities. And they all have their own ways of doing things, you know, and some of them existed a thousand years before another. And it's just this, it's, a, it's anything but a linear timeline, yeah. you know. But it seems clear, like, for example, that the heads reflect a a singular style. Yes. And that... It, you're, and, and the heads, the, that style is so much different than some of the other yeah, things you exactly. see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're very distinct. Mm-hmm. Right? They stay, you can, when you see one, you're like, that's an Olmec head. You, just, you yeah. can't m- mistake it for anything else, yeah. right? And you see other stuff and you're like, that's not one, yeah. right? It's different. Um, they're unique. And it's possible that they've been there a long time. Yeah, and people, other cultures and peoples have found them, moved them to their place because they're like, "Well, look at this thing. Yeah, this is the face of a god." You know. Well, and that that was something that was really interesting. When we were at San Lorenzo, we spoke to an archaeologist there who had to be in his eighties, and he was a teenager during the major excavations at San Lorenzo, and he said one that at the Red Palace there were excavated three skeletons that were taller than six foot five which is unheard of. And where are those bones today? Probably like in a box, you know, at the bottom of a museum. Never going to see the light of day. And taller that, than six foot five can mean a lot of things. <laughs> taller than six foot five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Eight feet? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and so uh, the other thing was that the main heads at San Lorenzo were... 60 feet under the ground and so dr barnard's talking to this guy in spanish he's like he's like he's like 60 feet or six feet and the guy's like 60 feet and he goes 60 feet or six feet (laughs) and he's like like 60 60. feet and he's like what and you know he's talked to an archaeologist the guy who has worked at san lorenzo his whole life is telling dr barnard this and he's like dr barnard like the the tour kind of moves on to go walk around the site and he walks back he's like i just can't I can't, I can't believe that. How, 60 feet. Wow. You know, and he was yeah. just mind blown that and he was like, he's like, he's like, I have to go back and, and relook at all of this again. Yeah. And yeah, sure enough, we've talked about it since then, 60 feet on, yeah. under the ground. I that mean, blew my mind. Yeah, so you, that's, that's, <clears throat> what's the nature of the and sediment they've also, on top? They've also refuted, yes, they've refuted the idea that these were buried purpose purposefully okay, so you know, you know with gobekli tepe now they say like oh, okay it probably wasn't buried purposely now yeah. i think they, they say that now they say the same thing about the olmecs now is that that they weren't buried purposely so if that's the case how that's the really hell old is it that's, 60 feet yeah so they weren't the they ground. weren't in pits that were dug to bury them that's yeah what you're yeah. saying okay they were no no yeah they yeah, yeah, were yeah, where they were sitting true. used to be ground level yes and you know you know what's really strange is if if they were sixty feet under the ground, how is a city built on top of it later on? You know what I mean? Like, how would somebody come later on and know that there was a city there, um, that there was an even more ancient site? Because you have the he- you have the heads down here, but higher up, that that's rain. rain. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. higher Storm's up, coming. higher up. You yeah, have we're gonna the, have to cut this thing off. I know. <laughs> thunder comes. Higher up, you have the Red Palace. So the Red Palace is sixty feet above or fifty feet above the above these heads, and then you also have um, uh, those um, those tenon heads that I showed you. Those are closer up to the surface as well. Well, I can, only... I can give a possible explanation for that, <clears> and that's just some, this is something we've observed is mm-hmm. that people live in the same spots because of geographical reasons, mm. right? Um, it's like if you're going around looking for where, where is the, the midden mound where the Indians had their camp because you want to find some mm-hmm. arrowheads. And eventually you find out that the, the old farmhouse that's out there is basically on top of it or right yeah, next to yeah, it. It's like yeah. people build. And, the, you know, I don't know if the farmers knew <laughs> that there was a midden there or not, but it doesn't matter. It's like that's the spot. That's where you want yeah, to yeah. camp or you build your house. So it could be the same thing. The heads are down there and the city is up here because – People come in and they're like, this is where we should build. There's a river right there. There's a hill over here. This is a good spot. Yeah. Yeah, we need more data. Well, really, okay. Because so it, just, it depends on the... No, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, but I'm just saying in terms of figuring out what how they could be 60 feet underground, there's a lot that we need to know about the sediment that yeah. was burying oh, yeah. them. Yeah. It, was it all occupation layers? Was, what, was it occupation layers separated by lenses of 
cataclysmic material. runoff, like yeah. material that came from higher ground and just flooded, put six feet of material on top of it, and then there's more occupation yeah, yeah. layers under that, and so on and so forth. Yeah, um, flooding is. The, you know, are the heads themselves in occupation layers? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or yeah, are right. they just sitting by themselves in mm. in empty sediment? Yeah, exactly. Were they yeah. upright? Were they on their side? You know, there's so much stuff, but uh, and is it? Is there a lot of elevation change in the in the area, right? Are there higher areas, uh, or is it fairly no. flat? It's, it's mostly flat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's tough to. So, I'm assuming they're close to water, probably. Yeah, they're, and so they're near the ju- Quetz, have to be the, flooding. Uh, the Quetzalcoatl River, flooding. Yeah. Yeah. So here's here's the strange thing. So this right here, if you if you want to put this up on the screen, mm. so this is that burial cache I was talking about earlier. So the reason that the, the reason I I floated, and I, was like, I was like, well, how do they know that there there were people out there, or that people lived there once before? And and I think your answer is is you know smart and logical that people find good places to live. Yeah. Now here's what's really strange is so this was buried in Laventa. Um, in a six foot shaft. So there was like a little shaft offering tomb. And it was buried six, six feet under the ground. A thousand years later, somebody came by and dug up this cache right here, revealed the heads of these little fi- of these jade figurines and then buried it again. <laughs> <laughs> How big are the figurines? About that big. So About eight, eight inches, eight inches, yeah, ten yeah. inches. Man, so, so a thousand I years want later, to invent I, a story about that. Right <laughs> now. So a thousand years later, somebody dug it up, revealed the heads of these guys. Yeah, and didn't dig it. the whole body, but they were still standing. They knew exactly where. I mean, and I'm talking about they dug it the same um, circumference as the original shaft burial. So. They, they knew exactly where it was. They dug straight down, revealed the heads, and buried it again. They were checking to make sure the magic was still going. <laughs> it, isn't it weird? It's like, like someone told me the magic had stopped. And then they went and they dug down there and they were like, nope, they're all still in their place. It should be right. And then they reburied <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. It's weird, right? That is very you know, strange. You know, and, and well, I mean, was there some kind of marker on top of it? I mean, nobody knows, but. It could um, have been, yeah, or it could have been a written or oral tradition mm-hmm. that exactly told the spot and somebody went to check like is this story real yeah yeah sure enough they found it they found the heads and freaked them out and they're bury it holy crap yeah, yeah, yeah. or it was like <laughs> where this is is an exact distance triangulated to what you really want oh uh, yeah yeah so you dig down to make sure yeah you and find like, okay, that and you're like mm, okay that's now the I survey can, point I can do 200 paces north northwest yeah, <laughs> yeah. interesting <laughs> well well right next to this so if you're standing on where this shaft uh, burial would have been or where this cache would have been buried. If you're standing right here and you look directly southwest, those two column tomb things would have been right here. And if you look northeast, the Pyramid of Levento would have been right there. So you're like standing in the middle of the uh, sanctuary area of mm. Levento is where this would have been. Those do I know what like this columns. is. I know what this is. This is the gathering of the 200 when Shimyaza was like, "We're gonna, oh. <laughs> we're gonna take the daughters of man, yeah, and take and them make to be them our, our wives. wives, yeah, and we all have to seal the deal, and we're gonna do this thing, right? Yeah." And so then later, Enlil was like, "Who was it?" And then he dug down there, and he was like, "It was you and you and you and you." And you. <laughs> that's I, what happened. I, I, another thing that's strange is that these guys all have elongated heads. Yeah, and um. So what's interesting is what you said that they they look like the columns. They do look like the columns, but if you look closely, these have little inscriptions on them or little The columns in the background have inscriptions? Yeah, like yeah. Like Exactly. Okay. There are six stele in front of the pyramid of, of Laventa on the opposite. So if you're standing here looking at the column tombs this way, looking at the pyramid of Laventa on the other side where the main plaza of the city would have been, there are six stele sitting up there and that's what they think this procession is taking place in front of those six stele in front of the main plaza where all the people were living. So they think that this is, this is acting. It's, it's, basically a snapshot of Olmec life. There's some kind of procession happening. Yeah. And the guy who's standing at the front, he is sandstone. He's not mm-hmm. jade like the rest of them. Mm-hmm. So 
I mean, obviously we have no idea what this is, but these guys all have elongated heads and they're performing some kind of procession and we don't see these elongated heads also depicted on the Olmec head. So it's either showing you that there is a difference between these people, like it's two completely different cultures or the elongated heads, they are literally elongating their heads to show that they're shamanistic people and it's two different classes in one culture. Yeah. The, the, the giant heads are the warriors and these guys are the shaman. Yep. Because, I mean, the, the huge heads, they give you this sort of... Yeah. Like, yeah they kind of look like... Uh, well, and they also have earrings that that we see later on in the Maya world that indicate when somebody is like a warrior king. Mm. So it, it's probably maybe something that's handed down over time. Okay. That yeah. kind of... Um, that kind of ritual, you know, um, but you don't see any of their heads elongated. Right. They definitely don't have long heads. And so. just for those of you wondering, the cross looking things on their back, those are the wire stands to make, to keep them standing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're not so part of the, I'll try to jump back to the, uh, so watcher is pointing out real quick that, um, in an incredibly dense area of vegetation, you could get about a foot of topsoil a century. So 6,000 mm. years minimum to bury those heads just by soil accumulation alone, most likely looking at six to eight inches a year. So six to 12,000 years without an event that moves a lot of earth, which we know there were plenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here we have a shaman emerging with a child. Um, when you're there in person, well, a couple things to point out about him is that he definitely has an elongated skull under that hat of his mm -hmm. his phrygian cap yeah, yeah yeah and and that elongated skull looks just like when you look at the depictions of akhenaten with his long head underneath mm -hmm. that pharaoh's hat it's very similar to that and when you're there in person you can tell that he's got that he's got those uh oh what are those lips called um what was it? Bifurcated the, lip? Is that yeah, what you're talking about? Like yeah, it's, yeah. He's he's got that kind of lip. And and we think that maybe they were cutting their lip to give them that curled kind of jaguar lip where their lips are turned down. But he has that. And the child has that same sort of um ah uh, the the word's escaping me right now, but there's a certain type of lip. It's it's a deformity that sometimes people are oh. born with. Um, and watcher lip. can look it up. Cleft lip. Cleft. cleft yeah, yeah. Lip. So he has, he has a cleft lip with fangs coming out, and the child has that as well. That is completely different than the old neck ruler you see right next to him. That obviously, you know, looks like a portrait of a normal looking Veracruz culture person. So you're seeing, and the eyes of the of the shaman also are very different. What is the very different shaman emerging out of? So the it's a, it's a portal. It's a cave, um, and so. We think that this is depicting the Olmecs emerging from caves because way, 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 way further west in Guerrero, Mexico, we find these caves with these. Um, so what we're looking at, these are around 3,000 to 3,300 years old, um, sometimes thought to be a little bit younger than that. <laughs> what, what's the bell for? 33. Oh, 33. Oh, okay. um, and, so, and so older than that, about 4,000, uh, we find 4,000-year-old cave paintings in the same style as what we see in the Olmec world, depicting a lot of the same things we see in the Olmec world. So we see cave paintings of people sitting up on top of altars like the guy on the right, and we see cave paintings of people holding up altars like this in caves from 4,000 years ago in Guerrero, or at least a thousand years older than these, however they carbon date it. And so they think that this shaman emerging from this portal is showing the Olmecs leaving these caves. Like maybe maybe their culture descends back further into these caves and it's symbolic of So this is their ancestors the bringing the Olmecs out of the caves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. or it's a procession of some kind. Like they would travel from the Olmec heartland to these caves in Guerrero, and that's where a shaman could be born or would be initiated inside of the cave or a child would be initiated. And so that he, they bring the child out, and it's like your claim to divine rule. You know what I mean? Or you have your power. or I'm sorry, your I divine can, power. Yes. You know, something like that. Yeah. Again, I would, I'm, you know, um, I'm going Sitchin here and being like, this is the god delivering the, mm -hmm. the, the next king. Yes. You know? Well, and that's kind of that's kind of what I've always thought is like 
Well, maybe, maybe the because here's the and thing. the cave could be a womb as well. Yeah, right? like, yeah. Well, and here's or the thing. a piece of technology. So, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, so look on, at it. So on yeah. the left, on the left, you've got these warriors or these slaves or these servants holding up what looks like an altar on the right you can see somebody sitting on top of it so it looks like that's a throne also the one in the middle is an altar slash throne so i've always wondered you know what if that what if this portrait here on the left the the king or the ruler would have sat on top of it and that child is a depiction of him as a child emerging and it's his claim to his divine power yeah. as the were jaguar but the problem is if the heads are depicting the rulers why is he not a were jaguar he would definitely be depicted as one if he was one. and he doesn't have the no he, he doesn't have any of that he's just nor he's just lip, very yeah. normal and then you hear from the people you don't see this on the internet but the people who have lived at san lorenzo and worked there their entire lives say that these heads are were found 60 feet down. Yeah. Not 6 or 16, but 60. So That's amazing. Yeah, it's that's very very strange. And so here I say notice the elongated skulls, even the baby has an elongated skull and the Olmec ruler non-elongated no. skull. So we go on to the next one. This is the side of the monument where you see him emerging you can see him emerging oh, yeah. on the right side holding the baby and you can see two other what they think are women with they probably have elongated skulls under those caps who are also holding children elongated children elongated that don't look children's like children. skulls that have a that have a cleft they have like a cleft in their skull and they're all it's like they're pulling their babies back and they're scared of the child that's coming out of the portal which mm. that that could be you know maybe i'm maybe no I'm i see what you're saying it's like they're there. they're actually frightened of yeah. this this child that's being birthed in yeah. this specific yeah. way over here yeah that's, that's the yeah, children that's are saying. afraid too and so um and also and they look, don't look like children look at the snake on the uh on the hat to the top right i mean how much does that remind you of the, the uraeus um, yeah yeah it's very very similar and we will actually see a more similar depiction of that here um so we come here. So this is the old world connection. Um, I feel like people have heard me talk about this a lot. You want me to go Keep going. Yeah. Get into this? Okay, okay. So <clears throat> we have Monument 13 on the left. This is found at Leventa uh, 900 BC about. In the middle, we have a Trace Sapotes clay rendering. Trace Sapotes is also inhabited at 900 BC. It's the end of of the uh it's around the end of the inhabitants of, of trace potes so there's a lot to unpack here on the left we see a guy with what looks like this pillowy flowy thing on top of his head that looks like a turban a turban yeah if you look really close and i zoom in here or a phrygian cap could be yeah if i if i let's see if it'll follow me here so he looks like he's got a Santa's beard with a big old mustache and a big bushy beard. He's holding up a flag. He's got kind of like a, uh, he's got kind of a belt or a cloth wrapped around him, draped behind him. Um, at the bottom, you can tell that he's wearing boots or shoes of some kind. It looks like, and that's all great. Other than the fact that nobody in Mesoamerica wore turbans, had big bushy beards, held flags, or had pointy shoes like that. So, he's got a vulture and like a three-leaf clover know, and think, a sun disc, and he's holding the, what is that, like a flag? Yeah, they, they, say, they say it's a flag. And then on the left, you can actually see these pictographs here, or these logograms, there's the footprint. And so they take the footprint to mean that, well, he's a traveler. He's coming, he's coming from somewhere. And so the interesting thing, interesting thing is that flags, one of the places that flags were invented was in the Nakata culture, pre-dynastic Egypt. They would have these boats, and so you they would mount a flag in the middle of their riverboat to basically announce what village they were coming from in like 4,500 BC, you know, Egypt. Um, and that's one of the places that flags were invented. We have no evidence at all of flags in Mesoamerica. There's nothing like that whatsoever. You come over to this middle guy here, and he's got... He's got these high pointy cheekbones and this this sharp chin with a little, you know, goatee looking beard 
there with a mustache. Uh, and he's, he looks like he also has this strange interpretation of a turban. And rather than looking Mesoamerican, he looks very Middle Eastern. Yeah, he looks like me. a depiction of the jinn. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, he does. And so right around at this time, and I mean, this is a stretch, but I think it's very possible right around this time, you have the Phoenicians around 900 BC launching expeditions out of the Strait of Gibraltar all the way around Africa. Some of them are going to try to come all the way back, and then some of them are going to try to maneuver through the Red Sea and find a way to the Nile and get back to Lebanon. Well, some of these boats go missing. A lot of them go missing. Who knows? Storms, shipwrecks, they sink, whatever. But some of these boats go missing, and they've done two experiments in modern times that if you push a boat just a little bit too far west out of the Strait of Gibraltar, currents will carry it straight from the Mediterranean Sea all the way across the Atlantic, down through the Bahamas, into the Gulf, straight into Veracruz, where the <laughs> Olmecs are at. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah. And so that's that's all the evidence. That's all it is. But this wow. is just a hypothesis that that we could be seeing old world, old world meeting the new world right here at about 900 BC. Now, did the Phoenicians ever sail back? Probably not. They probably died. Um, but it's how long does it take or lived with them for a while and or live with them for yeah, a while and, and left and, legends. And, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And their DNA is just so scattered and sparse yeah. and who knows how many people actually survived that yeah. expedition. If it happened, what were you about to say? I was just wondering how long it takes like the boat to, to drift. drift. I don't know. I don't know. I, I need to, I need to know that number yeah. though of how long it took. I wonder if that's a date next to the traveler guy. Those symbols rec rep represent. Oh yeah. This is when he came. It's it, the time I mean, of the vulture, the, the clover, and the sun. Yeah, the the problem the problem is that this is the very beginning of writing in Mesoamerica. Yeah. So whatever this means, we don't really know. Course, I mean, yeah. maybe the foot is obvious that he's a traveler, but everything else, gosh, we don't know. I mean, this right here could mean three, um, but as far as the vulture or whatever this is, and. Whatever right. Well, is. they yeah. could just be saying this was the time of the vulture, or sure. this vulture was high in the sky, or sure. you know, whatever. Yeah, and, and it's just context that we don't yeah. understand. It could be constellations. You should show it to Matheson again. Yeah, yeah. He'll pull constellations out of that. So uh, who has? We it? should we should wrap it up though. I think. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, that was a great place. So to wrap who it up had elongated should. skulls? We'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> who had elongated skulls? Oh, man, I love this. Pro Thank you so much, dude. Yeah. Like you gave this at the eclipse, and it was you went through it much quicker. But this is awesome to get to sit <laughs> much here quicker. and discuss every slide with you and yeah. really dig into it. Because <laughs> yeah. when I saw it, I was just like, "Oh my god, this is amazing." <laughs> well, when I come back next time, I'll I'll pack more on here. Yeah, uh, and yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll just make it like a eleven part series. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I don't care. I'm yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got eleveners in our. In our listeners. Do you really? Yeah, 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 okay. We've done 11 part series before and we call them, if you made it all the way through, you're an 11er. 11er, okay, okay. <laughs> interesting. That's interesting that I would say that. You picked the right number, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, thank you guys again for the third time. And yeah, uh, man. Yeah, it's, I, I, love, I love coming and talking to you guys. Yeah, this is, this, like, all this stuff is amazing. So, okay, so you'll be back. It won't be... Next week or the week after, we got other Probably stuff Probably a going month. On. Yeah, it might be. Sure, sure, But we will have a part two. That's what I'm telling people. There will be a part two. Shortly so before or after Cosmic Summit. Yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. Would you yeah. like a high five? <laughs> <Yeah>. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And to all you listeners out there, thank you guys so much. Uh, we love you. Always have. Always love will. Love you guys. Good night, Adamu. Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs>